long swing tall man won five times on the US tour three on the nationwide tour won the Mexican over twice that's got to stop and it's not going to stop although it's only just trickled in they should be able to knock it on the green from there okay, I'll have to be careful but you must be pretty good at those long bunker shots Sam. Well, from the front edge, he's probably only got 140. Jesse, I'm sure he can get an 8-iron at it. You're, pro you're probably right. We've seen a couple of great bunker shots. JB Holmes hit one out of that bunker at 17 the other day, uh, up almost onto the green. And of those four bunkers you can see down the left there, the first two are a bit shallow now. And the L's a bit of bother at the 12th. Well, he's not just chipping out. That's a five or six iron he's got there, so he's got a half-decent light. Dangerous though, coming Nothing. out of this stuff. Oh, that's the danger. That's 40 yards short of the green in that trap, and that will be extremely difficult. Just had to jump that there Get on the green. He's three under today, back to level. He's going for everything. As is this man, and most of it coming off as well. 16 year old Manasero. Oh, look at this shot from Manasero. My goodness. A couple of the BBC boys will be getting very excited about him. They've got him at 150 to 1 to finish in the top 10 and 33 to 1 top 20. This is Garcia just finishing off. And eventually not to one in. Another championship gone for Sergio. 71 today, plus 6. So there you go, he is off not to be this year for Sergio Garcia. Finished heading to the clubhouse and who knows what then? Well, Dan Walker can perhaps explain. Unlucky for Sergio, another open gone. It's gonna be intriguing to see what Ernie can do out of that bunker. He's, as they were saying, just somehow Got not to drop any shots at all if he's to have a chance. Been a very disappointing day for Brandon Grace. He bogeyed the first, the third, and now the sixth. He's three over, five over for the championship. Playing with John Daly, who double bogeyed the third. He's at four over. Sink on the first. left wind to get it the right flag he's turned it over oh that's horrible it's plugged in the down slope that is going to be a impossibly difficult shot green the flag is on the other side of the green but even so to control it out of there what a nightmare for a great shot from young Matteo into the 11th. It's such a difficult flag to get to. He took it on and has given himself a chance of a birdie. Oh, this is Manasero for birdie on 11. Just to get within three of the lead for the 16-year-old. is Almost, almost. Out in 33, birdie's 10, 3-11. Three under for the day, an even par. Fantastic performance for a 16-year-old Mark. He's playing with a complete freedom of youth, and uh, amazingly, so is Tom Watson. Now this is—it must be Ernie's fourth shot. So I'm getting into the bunker with his second. 
needs to hold this for a part. But more importantly, Musket down in two, and that is a gem. It's a bogey, but it's a very good bogey. Going in the drop one, go back to plus one for the championship. This is Andres Romero. This is for an eagle at the 17th. It's a good part. Oh, yes. Right in the middle. Well, that gets him to three under for the day. Plus two for the championship, and that's in 16th spot currently. Part of the last should make him a top 15er at the end of the day. Good stuff. Back on the first tee, two ball of Retief Houston and Jim Furyk. That's a hearty two ball. So much pedigree and quality there. Furyk starting one under, Houston two under. Dangerous man. Bryce Mulder here, Mark. Looking, looking at thinking about coming out backwards. He's just trying to get it out uh, somewhere. He, he, he can't go towards the flag because he'll just dunch it into the face. Well, I hope he does get it out, Sam, because there's footprints everywhere now. He's also aiming straight at out of bounds now. That's a good shot. He's kept it out of the thick stuff. That's all. Sad start on the opening hole for him. It was a poor second, but it wasn't that poor. Yes, it's amazing. You shoot a lovely third round, and then suddenly it's welcome back to Lynx Golf. Good pedigree. First team All-American five years. I mean, no one's done that apart from, well, Mickelson did it. Yes, a great pedigree coming out of college. Hasn't quite lived up to all that promise, but perhaps now Matthew Goggin loosens up on the practice ground, playing with Tom Watson in the final group, heading out, let us remind you, 20 minutes' time. Wonder what's going through his mind. Chance of winning the Open. Now there's another couple on this tee who have got great chances today. Jim Furyk, especially Jim Furyk and Goosen. Both US Open winners, both Proven winners. And within three shots of Tom Watson. We just saw what can happen in uh, Lynx Golf with Bryce. The first hole there in that bunker. This is game number 35 on the team from USA, Jim Furyk. South Africa. One of the more elegant players in the world, Retief Goosen. Beautiful golfer. Great striker of the ball, wonderful flight on it. You watch him on the range, you just Stand in awe. This is his opening tee shot, last round. Time to challenge. Oh, a beautiful swing, full, powerful, rhythmical. Oh, absolutely, the leather along the line up the right, standing perfect. 
take a wee chance there, Mark, didn't he? He's been, a, he's been more aggressive than anyone we've seen. That's right, 30, 40 yards past that first trap, so he's left himself a very short iron in. And being aggressive from the first tee, that's what I like to see. You're right, that was extremely aggressive. In fact, I don't think we've seen hardly anyone hit it up there. That was <laughs> quite amazing. So they head up the first. And up ahead at the green, Bryce Mulder, this to drop just one. He's pitched from here after being plugged in the bunker, played out backwards. Two gone at the first hole. Suddenly such a late tape of time. One of the leaders now back in the pack. Only at 13. Pin way, way back today. This is the tee shot, just an iron. Just keeping it out of the bunkers on the left. Oh, hopefully, what a bounce that took. Such a difference too, Mark. He's just going to enter the rough area. He won't be able to put any spin on it. The position of that pin is going to need some spin. It does make a difference, Sam. If I can say a quick hello to all the members at Burley Park Golf Club, where I grew up. They were very kind recently. Glenn Davis, the pros, just had a part bypass. Glenn, I hope you're doing well, enjoying the golf. Sorry about the commentary. There's Russ Fisher making his way towards the first tee. What a day it could be for one of these two Englishmen, Ross Fisher and Lee Westwood. Good times too for Ross Fisher. Hoping for a claret jug. Expecting his first ball. Come on, Ross. Come on, Ross. Oh, Ross. In 1999 at Pinehurst with a cage out in the course he was expecting. Rainey was expecting their first child. The cage never went off. She did both. The next day, Lee Westwood joins his playing partner, his fellow Englishman, on the first tee. What a match, what a group this is. Ross Fisher, 20. First in the world, won a couple of times in Europe, the Dutch Open two years ago and last year's European Open. Contended in the US Open a month ago, finished fifth. But he's playing. Well, we'll go down to Retief Goosen. That's huge, Mark, isn't it? Look where he is. He's turned this hole into a birdie opportunity when a lot of players are struggling for powers today. Pin 22 up there, cut six from the right-hand side. But Goose tends to hit it left to right. Wind right to left, he should be able to hold this up. After the tee shot, he'll be taking dead aim. Paul Eels is down there. Well, what an opening for Retief there. 246 yards, he hit his tee shot and just flicked a little wedge in there from 112. Jim Furyk laid way back, five iron in from 170 yards and he will have a birdie put on the first. Well, those are the two perfect ways to play the hole and uh, pretty much the perfect results from the second shots. Oh man, the Cerro's march continues, this for birdie on 12. What a talent, 16 years of age. Yeah! Oh my goodness gracious me. Oh, that was so close. He's lying eighth in the open as we speak. Quite extraordinary. If he can make three birdies, four birdies from here to the end, who knows? A 16 year old in a playoff with a 59 year old. Could happen. 
the youngest player to win the Open is young Tom Morris. He was 14. Don't know how strong the field was that year, but all he can do is beat everyone else. I think it was a two ball with his dad. <laughs> he can't have been that old at the time if young Tom was 14. Looking down on the first screen and Goosen and Furick. Both these players are masterclass, master study and quiet concentration. No wasted movements, just methodically, quietly plodding along. Also, Ernie's ball just trickling to the left rough. That's his second shot. He's played a, almost a chip and run, this. It is a chip and run. Is it enough? No, it's not. It's not. That will feed back off. Very unlucky, but not not a difficult chip from there. But that's exactly what Lynx golf is all about. One of the best players in the world playing a chip and run from 150 yards. They put their hats on backwards, young not these days. Not a lot of movement on this. Got you. Good part there from Fury. Played the hole very conservatively. Gets a very easy par. Now the route taken was by his partner, Goosen. Huge tee shot, just a little bit of backspin on his backspin on his second shot there. Took it farther away from the hole than it was, but this is not a difficult part. Slightly uphill, touch off the right. Not a lot of movement on this birdie putt for a teeth on the first. Wind howling across this first green from right to left. A little bit of break from left to right, so it should be a straight in putt for Retief. Is the wind getting stronger, Paul? Yes, it is, Sam. It's uh, gusting. It's also a chill to it as well. Can get very cold, Lynx Golf. I remember Ken Brown used to soak his balls in hot water for a good hour before playing cold weather. Before it used to come up. I'm better off the club head. Interesting. And Andres Romero. He's going along very nicely indeed. Final hole. We know how well he did at Carnoustie a couple of years ago in the final round. And another birdie chance there. He's coming off the back of an eagle on the 17th. Two eagles in today's round, one at the seventh as well, and three birdies, the kind of golf that he can produce. Well, two of Britain's best, and the very best of British to them both. This is game number 36. Holiday from England, Lee Westwood. Down there, Maureen. Well, the waiting is over for Lee Westwood. And many people here hoping he can step up and claim this first major title that they so feel is his. Mid iron, just to keep this ball safely away from those greedy bunkers down the left hand side. Seven victories to his credit, Lee Westwood. One in America, 18 here. Best round the world in England. Played wonderfully well in Japan over the years. A seasoned winner. England, Ross Fisher. Both players teeing it up on the left hand side, giving themselves a better angle on this opening left to right hole.
down by Fisher and Westwood. Good, solid start by them both. What lies ahead? Westwood all, also topping greens in regulation. He's hit more fairways, fairways than anyone. He's hit more greens than anyone. Yes, it's played of the highest order, Sam. But Westwood and Fisher. Fisher also fifth in fairways. So these two guys who are very, very long hitters hitting a lot of fairways as well. Here's Ernie. Just tried to clip his second shot out of the rough to avoid getting a flyer. Just tailed off. Just lobbing it over. Oh, beautifully played. Get in. Oh, he's done it. Well, that's a three out of nowhere. Brilliant stuff from Els. That's a level par. He's got a shot at this now. Strong finish. He could set a target. The others will be able to see it. Maybe the tide is turning for Ernie. Chris Wood, part of the first six. He has this for Eagle. Great second shot in. Finished fifth last year, knows what to do. This oh, it must be very quick. Go on, go on, go on. Yes! Eagle for Wood. Not Woods, Wood. Chris Wood back to level par. And right there. My word, what an exciting passage of play. Justin Rose made a birdie at that same hole alongside Chris Wood. He's at three over, but Wood at level par. Could do something from there, but you just get the feeling, as they were saying, that Ernie might be getting a feel for this. Been there before. Knows what it's all about. Tong Chai Jai Di, level par after two holes. Aitken one under for the round after four. Good rounds from Overton and Romero. But uh, we'll see. Not good enough to win it, but certainly to earn some nice cash on the final day. Mr. and Mrs. Watson. One will be watching avidly. The other will be trying to control his nerves. As he goes for six. Cool records set many, many, many years ago by Jay. And the modern hero of the world. Unique, special beyond. at the start of this championship for the final pairing on Sunday being Matthew Goggin who's never won a main tour tournament and Tom Watson you just couldn't have imagined it could you he won for the first time when he played at Carnoustie won the famous Duel in the sun here against Jack Nicholas, perhaps one of the greatest opens ever, a two-man battle. When Watson shot 65-65 over the weekend. The course looked very different to the way it is now. Not quite as strong as it was uh, here about an hour ago. Meanwhile, Ross Fisher down the shaft for his approach to the first. Shot there. Oh, that's a very right. good shot indeed. That's a brilliant shot from Fisher. You can't afford to be too aggressive in that one. You don't want to be missing it right. That's oh, just about where you've been aiming. Westwood, good line in. So just a little bit of left to right spin to try and hold it on the wind blowing into you off the right. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> well, 
Well, there's all sorts of good stories going on around the course today, and not least of them, Matthew Monacero, second to the 13th, where Earls has just chipped in for a three. And he's going to have to try and do something similar, not getting it up the slope to this raised plateau green. In fact, he's practically an Ernie's divot, I think. McDonald for a birdie. Tenth. About at 34, that takes him to one over for the championship, two under today. He's certainly improving his position considerably now up to 12th, tied 12th. It's one of those days where we're going to have lots of glorious blue sunshine and then every now and then a really dark cloud and a heavy squall coming through wind still blowing strongly from the west southwest Furyk at the second it's a long way from there to hack it out oh no into the gorse he will have no shot from there well, that's the penalty you pay when you get into the thick stuff and then try and take it on Yeah, that will be unplayable. Tension, most unbearable on the first tee. It is 2.19, just a minute until the final group in this Open Championship get underway. Goggin and Watson, back there in a moment. On the green, Lee Westwood. Long birdie attempt. Just feeling out the pace on the first green. Sometimes the pace of the green is slightly different to the practice putting green. It's unusual. You don't normally see people tee the ball up with the left hand. Both these players do it. Well, both players, Goosen and Furyk, missed the tee shots to the right. Heavy rough, pulled the second shots left and still more trouble with the front left hand pin here. So we could see shots drifting away from this group. It is the young Australian, Matt Goggin, nerves jangling alongside Tom Watson to get us underway in this final group, in the final round of the Open Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final game of the 138th Open Championship. On the tee from Australia, Matthew Goggin. Well, Philip Parkin is down there with this group today. Philip. Already an unbelievable atmosphere on this first tee. It's fine. Listen to the roar now. On the tee from USA, Tom Watson. <laughs> Forty hours on that first tee this week. His job's done. 
Case J form over. We all love you. Now Ross Fisher, what a start this could be for him. This for Birdie. This to tie the lead. Go on, go on, go on, Roscoe! Whoa! What a start. Great tee shot, great second. And the perfect putt. And Ross Fisher ties Tom Watson. Getting excited already. Tom will have known that. He'll have heard the roar at the first. And he'll know the battle the has commenced. Crooked stick in Carmel, oh, Indiana. Yeah. Right, a week after that. Seems like poor scheduling. Yeah. He's just saying to the British the Seniors Open and next week. Usually come and the US early. Seniors Open the week after. Bad scheduling, yeah. he said. Oh, man. The kind of yeah. Yeah. So Tom Watson's actually going to be playing three majors consecutively. Up ahead, playing alongside Ross Fisher, Lee Westwood to finish out for his four. That rattled in. Wonder how high that cup is cut there. And it bounced back out on him. Saw Manasero's second shot. This is his chip. Can he do what Ernie did? Oh, no, he can't. But he'll have that to save his power. Two real stories. I mean, Tom Watson almost 60. This man just turned 16 in April, so incredibly young. Ernie Els has reached the 14th. Yep, he's there. Back into the breeze coming from the southwest today. Four birdies today, dropped a shot at the 12th, but has just got one back at the 13th. Level par, four behind. Ten high back there. Turnover, Ricky Roberts is caddy saying, just a fraction right of the pin. Another beautiful long iron shot, though. Didn't turn round enough. Matthew Goggin second to the first. Bring it in off the wind. Well, it's not close, but uh, as an opening gambit, I say it's pretty much okay. So Watson, what's he got left, Philip? It's 155 yards, and he's hitting a six iron. It shows how the wind is affecting this shot. There you go, coming in from a little bit from the right into the face, and this one's gone left. Oh, oh dear. Well, we saw Bryce Mulder in there. He was on the left-hand side on the down slope, but that right in at the back lip there, and that was a poor shot from Watson. Well, it's not lying too badly in the, in the fat of the bunker. You can see where it pitched right up in the corner there and scooted back across. He'll be delighted when he gets up there and sees it lying perfectly. He was lucky there, Sam, wasn't he? That could have been a horror story. Well, if, it, ca if it carries another yard, it's probably going out of bounds. Now, off the back of his opening birdie, Ross Fisher, just an iron off the tee of the second. Little wind a little bit down and off the left. Right, John, right. Gone right, said a hearty Russian accent now. Quickly spotted. Was that a Highland reel? Chris Wood for another birdie. Now, this is a great shot. You get a fantastic shot into seven, made eagle. I'd say this was an even better shot. Eight, very difficult hole. Stay up. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Chris Wood. Goes to one under par, three behind, three under today after eight. His fifth last year, he knows what this feels like. Jim Furyk to drop a shot. Mm, good save of just one gone. Found the first, but he's obviously in all sorts of difficulty at the second. I don't think Tom Watson realised how much this wind was from right to left. Probably thought it was more directly into him, but got plenty of green to work with with this bunker shot. Decent lie. Into the wind. 
probably not going to be easy to get it all the way to the hole. Well, he may have misjudged the strength of it. The practice ground is quite sheltered by vans and stands and trees. First tee sheltered. Could be a bit of a shock when you get to the fairway. That's well played, but just six, seven feet shy. Left him one of them. 59, Tom Watson. Quite remarkable. Well, that start about Julius Boros at 48, winning the oldest winner of a major. That was being wheeled out at the Masters when Kenny Perry was looking to pip him by a few months, but 11 years older. Ross Fisher should be able to get the club on the back of this ball. He's 181 to go. Wind is hard off the left, and this is a seven iron. Anything up the left-hand side should track back on this wind. Did it win? Did it win? Just on the left. I've seen a few down there today. That will be a difficult up and down pin on the left. Not birdie at the first, but be a tough par for him at the second. There you see the thickness of the rough he's coming into. The club comes in. Right. Held on to it well, didn't let the rough turn the club over. That's what Jim Furyk did, and he went into the bushes. Well, we saw a conservative play from Westwood at the first to the fat of the green. This would be a good place to employ that tactic again. A slight wince. Slight, that's fine. You can topple off the green on the left and down to the member's third tee, so avoiding that fade. And Matt Goggin for birdie. Overlooked, underrated perhaps, but he should open with a steady par. Never underrated in Australia. Excited by it all, Peter Alice. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, what a big moment for Tom Watson, the very first hole, 10, 11 foot of repair. No. What do you think, Peter? In between clubs there on that second shot, just. Something, yes, it was quite a big error of judgment, wasn't it, after getting his drive nicely away? So, uh, we've got a new leader, Ross Fisher. What a day for him. What a day for half a dozen people or so. The way things are shaping up at the moment is quite extraordinary. Matty Goggin. For his par, nice four there for Matty. Two good shots, two good putts. It'll be a good settler for him. This would uh, take you to one under. Let the 14th difficult hole back into the wind. But that's okay. A power of the 14th is okay. Rosswood. Uh, Chriswood, Rosswood. Chriswood of ninth tee. Playing almost straight down wind, a little bit off the right. Much easier tee shot the last couple of days. Fisher and his caddy Adam were sussing out a spot on which to land this ball. And they were pointing at a spot just where the green begins. If that's the plan, he's going to have to go slightly right because there's a shoulder just up there which will bounce the ball left. Good shot. How's about this then? <laughs> well, you've heard a dream starts. Now you've just seen one. Three, three. What a, what a way to begin. I was just about to say the most important thing is getting a smooth start over the first six holes, whether a, a two par threes in the first six here at Tenby. And then, of course, you face a difficult run from seven to about, well, today to 14. And that was not an easy shot. 
morning was talking about pitching it in the bank and judging the tub and he lobbed and I thought, well, that's pretty close and then suddenly it's in. What a bonus. Could it be his day? The home of the Claret Jug. Wife and child appear. Baby, new baby appears. Everyone's well. What a, what a day that would be. Could happen. Well, what a start for Ross Fisher. And most, the man most unmoved was Lee Westwood. Another long-range putt again for him. As he... Oh, on line. Right in the throat. But... He's got to do what he's done over the last three days, just play the same golf he has and let it happen. Ken Brown. Oh, sorry, Ken, I didn't mean to start with you. Are you going to join us? What a start for Ross Fisher, my goodness, that's amazing. Back on the tee, second hole wind helping off the left, 428 yards. That's really heated things up a bit, isn't it, boys? Eh? Cool. Disappointing start there for Tom Watson. Second hole, wind off the left. 280 yards to reach the bunkers, that shouldn't be a problem. Steady, that's okay. Won't reach the thick stuff now. Chris Wood out on the ninth fairway. On your short iron into this back pin po position. Take the spin off the hill. Very nicely done. Had to get the two under. One of these guys could get in and post a score. It's amazing how much pressure that'll put on the rest of the field. Amazing run he's just had, isn't it? Eagle, birdie, that's, that's extraordinary it's scoring at the moment. Coming in thick and hard from everywhere. Justin Leonard, a couple over across the slope from right to left at the 14th. And is he going to turn? It is. Justin Leonard, one over par. Two under for his round. Pin's a little easier today. It's much more accessible. Just look, pretty tough breeze blowing. Ross Fisher with the third. Wind whipping across the course from right to left. Well, he didn't get much of a kick forward off that, but he's a mighty hitter and that could have chased miles down had he got a favorable bounce but that's in good position for 17 years eh? well who knows strangely enough I don't think that start of Fishers will uh, bother Westwood too much it'll almost make him settle quicker he's a good chaser and he know the fight is on Friendly. This is probably a good pairing for both these players, don't you think, Maureen? Well, I would say, Ken, they're very comfortable out here together. You know, it's um, just a fantastic arena, and the, the galleries are so split. You know, they have their favourites everywhere they look, and it's just a case that there's maybe one player that they cheer a little more for than others. But a uh, wonderful arena.
Not a very good life for Matthew Gawkins. Still 190 yards to go. Yes, that grabbed the club and shut the face down. That was an unlucky break there. Generally, in that first cut of rough, the lies aren't too bad. You can see Tom's ball just a few yards ahead. Yeah. Have a, had to really go down after that. Just an unlucky break for Matty. Oh, Watson needs a good, clean, straight hit into the middle of the green. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more difficult coming out of this semi rough. 185. That's more like it. Middle of the green, Tom. Dropped a shot at the first and missed Judd second. Manasero, 14th. Good effort, good effort, young Italian. Amateur has got the, the silver medal already. Yellow amateur in the event, there's only two playing. To championship, the British amateur at Formby, which got him into the field. Amazing. 16. That's me. It's a member just down the road from where I live at Little Golf Club. Very precocious talent. Back to the third green, Furick. Paul Eels. This is a long attempt here for Birdie. No, this is for a par oh, range. Par, missed sorry. the fairway to the left, hacked it out across the fairway. Poor pitch to here. Looks like another drop shot coming here for Furick. It'll be a 4 5 5 if he makes that start for Furick. One of the guys that have been under the radar all week, and you would expect to be there in the mix this afternoon. He playing alongside. Retief Goosen, three U US Open titles between them. So both of these guys are proven performers. Well, there's only one shot that Matthew Goggins got, and that is up and over the bunkers. Unfortunate to finish here. Downwind has to try and get this one to stop quickly to get it close to the hole. Cagey one, I would say. Couldn't afford to let it drift left of the pin, otherwise it kicks down the slope. Just had an email in from Colin Stewart from Tasmania. He's watching this, and he says he used to coach Matthew Goggin at hockey in Hobart in the mid-80s. And a lot of everyone in Tasmania wishing Matthew well. He said he was a good, uh, he was a handy goal scorer, Matthew. He's not a bad golfer either, Colin. I'm delighted to hear from you, and uh, hope you're all well down there under. Chris Wood now, this to get to two under through the ninth. Oh, just as we saw Monacero not that long ago. So Wood out in 32. All pars of an eagle at seven, birdie on eight. David McNeely's on the bag this week with Chris Wood. People getting a little excited out there. second being Tom Watson it's downhill but back into the wind so it's difficult to actually know how it's going to roll down here not bad if it comes Tom Watson of course if he should win this will tie Harry Varden's record of six open championships and I've just been speaking on the phone with his son Peter Varden who lives down in Budley Salton, a lovely part of the world on the south coast. The weather's nice down there, he's saying all the folk round and about there at Budley Salton and Golf Club and along the way are watching the golf and uh, hoping for great things, which you're going to get, I'm sure. Good angling for Ross Fisher, six iron into the cross breeze. Unlucky, could have carried a couple of yards further, it would have kicked straighter on, but 
on the putting surface at the third in two was satisfactory. I don't think that's too bad, Ken. That could have gone through the back of the green. Lee Westwood with five iron. Looks like he's going to play a little punch shot. Just watch the length of the follow through here. A punch it was. Oh, oh, that was the bunker that Ross Fisher just came off. Squirted away to the right there as a ball on the right hand side. Westwood in trouble. Goggin for his four. Just that'll be a bogey. Just coming up to midnight back in Australia. So I know that a lot of people will be glued to the television set. Hello, Lindy. Everyone, the Goggin clan down there in Tasmania. Blows like this down there, Peter. Very similar cl climate to Scotland. Well, it doesn't get as cold in the winter, but it can blow some wonderful golf courses down there in Hobart. Somewhere I've never been. I'd like to go there in New Zealand. Now, Tom, a little tiddler to tap in for his par four. Okay. It's quite extraordinary. The longer putts, his putter goes dead straight back, and it looks normal, but on the short ones, it's yeah. just straight back inside. Have a check on the leaderboard. Ross Fisher, it is. And look at that. Two shots ahead. And in good shape, but being chased by, uh, chased by uh, a lot of very healthy players. Watch down, down the bottom of the board there. Ernie Ells and a couple more, if, if, if they could... Uh, come home in 32 or so and that's asking a lot and set a score of one or two under par that could really set a mighty stiff target scoring is better today the wind I think may be getting up a little bit but the skies are pretty clear big clouds rolling about it's a, a brisk day for the, the locals would say this is a, a good golfing day providing you play reasonably well no fun if you're hopeless but quite good if you have some idea of what you're doing well these bunkers have to be treated with respect because the sides are very sheer but a couple of things in Westwood's favor the contours of the green will help feed the ball down towards the flag and he's slightly downwind so he'll be aiming to land this about two three four paces maybe onto the putting surface his first greenside bunker of the week Well done, he hasn't had much practice out of it. That's a lot of good shots. Left that for his par, Lee Westwood. They're stunning shots, aren't they? Well, it's amazing how the cushion of sand, and you hit sort of an inch or two behind, and it's the, as the club goes through and explodes the sand, that's what throws the ball out. And it's very frustrating for amateurs to be told how easy it is to get out of bunkers. But if the ball is lying quite, quite well, it is easy to get out if you just stand in the right position and but have the right club. Tom Watson on the third. Difficult hole this third. Tom Watson used to wind off the right hand side mostly. Striped it down the middle, I fancy. Soft bounce, a bit of a run. Oh, it's charging on a bit now, moving to the side of the fairway. That's okay. Most of the ball seem to be thrown right to left down this fairway. On the green, our leader, Ross Fisher. This looks a little sort of undulating sort of putt, Maureen. Well, it's a large green, and so many of these greens are just like rumpled duvets they've got soft folds and borrows he's only used the putter once so far big day for the caddies as well today they're 
partnership with their men. They'll all be thinking who's going to be the champion this week, which caddy has been with the most champions. Dave Musgrove, great old caddy, he's had a few winners in his time. And I wonder what the bonus will be. Pete Maffey, the uh, official caddy master here, was telling me how good they are now. Leonard on the 15th, the last of the short holes. Playing 215 yards today. 15th. Justin's done it perfectly. Landed right at the front edge. Blue down. Blake's way back, 31 on. A little testy one from Lee Westwood. Hit still Lee for his par. Yes. Yes. Just enough pace to hold his line. Super up and down. Well, I think there was a feeling around the screen that that putt could indeed set the tone of Westwood's day. We've seen that as being his Achilles heel so often in the past, but that was very well hold and a good escape. Billy Foster is caddy who did the, the charity walk. There she goes. Look at that. Four and a quarter inches wide. 1.6 inches, eight inches of the ball, and it's disappeared. I've always wondered why the hole's four and a quarter inches wide. It seems such a bizarre, the diameter. Yeah, it's it's written down somewhere. <laughs> ah, Fisher, you missed a couple of these. But not that one. I love the way he sort of jumps as he goes to pick the ball out of the hole and signals to the crowd. It's a lovely sort of gentle touch about it, almost. Amateurist, I'm really not used to this. I don't know what to do. He was your pick at the start of the week, wasn't he, Peter? He was, he was, he was. I only put a grand on him. <laughs> oh, look at this, see that little movement. Now watch, he'll stand up and he'll turn very graciously to the crowd. He'll lift his arm in a minute. He looks up, thank you very much there. And perhaps there's another one on the left-hand side that needs a little accolade as well. Only playing with Justin Leonard. Sing. Just where to land it. Wind hard off the right. And landed it just a few yards further than Justin, but just as good a result. Oh, even better. You won't see too many better than that today. Thomas LeVay had a hole in one earlier in the day at 15. Watson second. Down the hill. Steady. And that's twice he's gone through the green. The first hole and the third. Just flying a bit too far to the old adrenaline, whatever that is. Gogan just thrashing out of the long stuff and there's some vengeful old rough on this course if you're a little unlucky. When the visitors return in a few days' time, Ken, and they get round the course, there'll be... Uh, some good pickings, golf balls round and about the course. Particularly got a good dog. Here's Chris Wood at the 10th second shot, playing quite beautifully. Yeah. Leonard now for birdie on 15. Down the hill, break a little right to left. Oh. Left to right. Sorry. Former Open champion, won a Troon in 1997. Won the Players' Championship as well. Very good, steely competitor. Force playing 154 yards. Quite an accessible pin. We've seen a number of twos here today. They didn't even see that one. It was behind them. That was very wild. Very, very wild. Westwood could get level with him here if he could get a two. Just set it off down the right, I think. Just aim maybe in the wrong direction, just... 
Tried to be a bit too fancy, a bit edgy, a bit nervy, just open face, push out to the right, and that's that. Well, two and a half hours or so ago when I was out here with David Howell and Oliver Wilson, the wind was directly down the players here, right behind them. Now it's quartered round, it's hard off the left. Westwood trying to play a little low punch seven iron again. Played a lot of truncated follow through so far today. down it won't be too bad no, that's okay eighteen top tens five seconds so he's had a good run although he hasn't had a victory for a couple of years you may have noticed the players caddies have different colored bibs which help the spectators identify who is where and who's playing what and of course Official caddy master Pete Maffey comes from High Post Golf Club near Salisbury. Big things going on there today. Here's Goggy. Third shot. From around about 70 yards. Made good contact with that one. Just drifting a fraction on the breeze. Ernie, for his two at 15. No, no, no. Ooh. Rather weak Not effort there for Ernie, but even par. Needs a couple to finish with. Something to post, three under for his round. One thing I like about Tom Watson, he gets over these little chip shots and it's not an automatic that he's going to just go and get the sand iron or the extra lofted club and really takes his time. He took the sand iron back, he's going to land it just short of the green and chase it up there. Nicely done. Can play any shot in the book, Tom Watson. Great exponent of... The bump and run, little knockdowns, whatever you want to do, dial a shot. Left himself one of those though, Wayne. Four feet and a little bit of change. Chris Wood at the tenth for a birdie. Swinger left to right. Down starts to turn. Is it too high? No, it's not. Two under. <laughs> The lanky lad strikes again. Because he has the advantage of being six or seven holes up the fairway, he's got those tucked away. Jimenez is in some trouble here at 16. Over the back. Splashes it down there. How about that? As he holds some yardage of putts and pitches. He keeps dropping those sunglasses though. I wish he'd stop taking his hat off. Every time he drops the glasses. Got hair like Rita Hayworth. <laughs> Our opening day leader. 64 in the first round. Well, Ross Fisher's ball finished underneath the camera, which was removed. The ball didn't move. So he continues. He's got to be careful here. There's a lot of straw like dead grass and it's, a lot of it is loose but some of course is not so you have to be careful not to to cause the ball to move here it's a very delicate shot up over the shoulder of rough down slope towards the flag but into the breeze well i think he was very lucky finish under there he could have been in a horrible place and smashing it out and going anywhere as it is he's going to be no worse than a four may even hold it for a par and that would be a bonus even if he misses it so, uh, he, he, he'll be okay the way he started a uh, couple of threes to start chipping in at the second Maddie Goggin for four 
Yes, that's what you need. Something, just anything to keep it going. It's a great putt there from Goggin. One over today. Hasn't won for 10 years, but he's definitely due. Tom Watson with all these. He's left himself too many of these this week. He's either rolled it stone dead or holed from 10 feet. This for his par. This will give you a close up of his action. Well, he had a shaky period in his round yesterday and he pulled it back together. But to start off with a couple of drop shots in the first three holes is not good. Solid start for Lee. The series tee shot number 15. Nice forward bounce. Another nice forward bounce. Keep going, baby. He's, got, he's reading this well. Well done. And the Cero is currently in seventh position on even par. Six players under par. There it is. Fisher currently leads by three from Chris Woodley, Westwood, Tom Watson, and Matthew Goggin. Goosen, the only other player under par. Ailes and Anasera coming along on the rails. I can't believe 16 years old. That's a drop shot there for Fisher. Back to four under. Now leader by two. How old was Seve at Birkdale in 76? He was 19, wasn't he? 18, 18 or 19, 19, yeah. When he finished second. Yeah, 19. Johnny Miller won. Seve's tied with Jack. Oh, the woes that can happen. Kevin Sutherland was out in 32, started home well and took nine at the 14th. Little up the hill, this putt. And a zero. Did he hit it? Oh, yes, he has. I thought it was going to drift to the right. Oh, yeah. Westwood for his par three. All pars to start with for Westwood. Chris Wood on the tee of the 11th. Stocks rising today, Peter, isn't it? Chris Woods. Absolutely. To the fourth tee, Matty Goggin. That's 171 yards today. David Collins wants to know the speed of the greens. Today. What do you think they're running at today? He's a member of Mendip Golf Club. Probably about it? ten and a half. Ten, ten and a half. Yeah. yeah. You can't get them much uh, faster than that, David. Being by the seaside, if the wind blows and the greens are too tight and tough and short and slopy, they get ball gets blown about, so you can't play them. Going right. Oh, short right. He's just flared that. That'll be back in the bunker. Very difficult up and down there from Matty. Well, Tom Watson was unfortunate with the second shot to the last because the wind just changed direction almost as he was over the ball instead of it being into off the right. It came directly off the right. He hit it straight at the flag and then just because of the wind went through. Well, because of that wind direction, it also messed up Matthew Goggin with his choice of shot then. Tom now going with a seven iron. Should gather up, Peter. Yeah, could come around nicely. With a bit more speed, that was 
But it's still a good shot. Iron off the tee. The fifth tee for Westwood. Long par four. Fairway is, an, is a must, though, here. Oh, goodness boy, me. Oh, boy, that's dreadful. He may have been lucky. That was a dreadful shot. This one obviously has got some left to right on it. And he's in the in as well. Those are two absolute whammeroos there, aren't they? Chris Wood. This is for Birdie. Just to get to three under. Oh, goodness me. Well. That's a nice par, though, isn't it? I mean, at this stage now, if he does nothing worse than par, he'll be very happy at the end of the round. Stand nice and still, please. One more. Thank you. Look at that. Three, 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 four, three, three. No fives yet on the card. Two, three, four, fives. Doesn't add up to much. Steve Goosen, Papa, one under, and has he hit it? He has. Yeah. Well, in a steady way, one bogey coming at the second, all the rest tires for South Africa, Retief Goosen. Now Matthew Goggin with this very awkward bunker shot, 30 yards, has to get it up very quickly. He went with an eight and came way short earlier today, they were just hitting nine irons on this hole. Got to get it up quickly, but also going forward. Looks to have done it well. Sean Gainsford from Surrey asked what would happen if Man Manasera, the amateur, won. What would happen to his prize money? It goes to the first professional, uh, Sean. I don't know if uh, any of them tie, they split the money. What's this now? In he goes. Came up a bit short. Hide the ball, and suddenly the ball's gone. First prize is seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Goes to the winner. When Tom Watson won in nineteen seventy-seven. He got ten thousand. I think those that don't even play the final 36 get a couple of thousand pound apiece just for the, you know the efforts of uh, getting here so 70 what about 73 players at the moment the conservative uh, choices of club there by both Fisher and Westwood and then the relatively poor executions have made this really into a par five for them both they'll both just advance the ball some 100 yards maybe 120 or so down the green yeah. try to chase it down there We'll have to keep it short of the Queensland right, bunkers, there, however. You can see you can just flick it out to there. Yeah. Anyway, there. Goggin now to try and save par on four. Be another bogey for Maddie. So two over through the first four holes. Not good for he and Tom. Don't want to drag each other down. You can see that Ross Fisher just missed a huge bush, just cleared it by some eight paces, so both players slightly fortunate here. Get out. Oh, where's that gone? I thought he was looking a little ambitious there. I think he sort of scuffed it in front of himself. Stand still, crowd, please. Yeah. Top got grabbed. Oh, now he's hit it into... Go back a bit, please. 
Tom Watson. Good to get there, get there. Oh, goodness me. Never mind. It's a good solid four to three. He doesn't know what's going on up ahead of him on the fifth hole. Leader in trouble. Yeah, I can see the back this line. This isn't looking good for Ross Fisher. This is a much worse line than the first one. You even think, oh, you just got to come on all the way back. He's just moving some of the cameramen back. This is a coming out sideways job now. Well, two clubs, there's nothing, there's nothing going back. I mean, mm. safety in the fairway which dealt with the careful, fairway the distance they're off they've sort of made an error of 40 yards or more, or more. Yeah, he's in it out of Don King in a headlock isn't he? Tell you what. He's not guaranteed to get this out either. Right down on the steel of the golf club here. This has got to be a hard hit. Did you see where it finished? Mo, did he go straight across the other side? Well, that's come way into the rough on the left-hand side. And Westwood over his ball, and maybe that was a salutary lesson to him, just to not be too greedy. He could it forward okay. Yeah, I don't think in the middle of the fairway up there, about 50, 60, 70 yards short of the green, isn't it? Looks to be a ball in the middle of the fairway. Westwood has done the sensible thing and he's managed to dunch his down the fairway some 100 yards, leaving more of the same into the flag. I think uh, it didn't look like Fisher was trying to take too much on. I think he actually didn't hit it hard enough that first one and just trying to be very conservative and. He finished up in a worse lie for his third shot and then had to give it some sort of comment on Fisher. Well, could be very expensive. It's not over yet. Fisher was going along so beautifully that a bad tee shot at the fourth would cost him a shot. Another push out to the right. Again, we're, I mean, these aren't sort of even reasonable lies. Yeah, that is. Well, I haven't been able to get over there to have a look at this lie, but the news is that it is actually worse than the first one on the other side of the fairway. <laughs> Remember, this is his fourth shot coming up now. And he's just left of a bunker that is about 250 out from the tee, so he hasn't actually made too much progress up this hole. Oh, things were so rosy 40 minutes ago. God, it looks awful as well. It's like it's looking like you could play it backwards. This is for a birdie two for a teeth. Two iron from 227 to here. Straight downhill. This is a quick one. as the greens are getting a little tinge of brown in them, they're drying out. Sun and uh, wind drying them. Good three though for Goosen. It's a par putt for Ernie Ells on 16. Justin Leonard had a double bogey six. So after that, two three for Leonard. Three two, he's in six. Oh dear, 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 dear. Chris Wood, lovely tee shot up the 12th. His second shot. Quick through the water stack. Try and cut the ball and hold it into the breeze. Nicely done. 21 years of age. This is his second open, the first one last year at Berkeley, finished fifth. 
good steady season on the European Tour. This is the sorry sight of Ross Fisher taking an unplayable lie here at the fifth. He's played three, dropping for four. His next one will be five. Happy that's not near it's a it. very unappetizing place to have to drop a golf ball. Of course, back on the tee, um, Tom Watson and Matthew Goggin are well aware that they're having trouble up ahead. They're in big trouble. Certainly, Ross Fisher is. It shows you how expensive one wild shot can be. In. How far is he back now, Mo? We've lost a bit of track of where his geography is on the course. You can see he's down the left. He's got 227 left to go. Ken. And you know he's got about 200 yards. If he's taking a direct line to the flag, he's got about 200 yards plus over big rough dunes yeah. and bunkers it's impossible for me to tell how well he has dropped this ball but it's yeah. time for a cool head More and off just off. a little Locking bit of on. deep steady breathing now for us well this will be five on for six two putts looking very much like an eight at this moment going on it's just doesn't really want these way he's a very quick player Watson <laughs> and these hold-ups will not help him just going to the front of the tee to get a better view of the fairway slightly unsighted for the back to you as to all the fairway area probably just to feel the wind a little bit Peter Yes, well, I really don't understand the thinking of Westwood. Westwood may get away with a four, but uh, I don't understand the hitting irons off the tee because the wind must be either helping or cross left to right. So I would have thought little three or four wood or something, just turn the toe in and just aim it, keep it flat, get it, get it right to left a little bit, would have done the job perfectly. As it is, it's very expensive. We've already seen how awkward this uh, fifth tee shot is. Bunkers everywhere. Wind off the ref for Tom Watson. He's admiring out with the tee. Philip. I think he was debating of the options there, but deciding to go with the driver. Let's cut the hole down to size, that's for certain. Westwood has had a drop off the crosswalk. 117 left to go straight into the wind. Wood for his birdie to get to three under the leader currently four under Ross Fisher but in all sorts of trouble try nice effort it's been some adventure for Ross Fisher Mark Ross Fisher's been here there and everywhere Amazing how one poor shot can catch you out. It's horrible. It's, it's uh, just thinking it's like watching The Office with Ricky Gervais. You get that sort of uneasy feeling and don't know whether to watch or look away. This is his sixth shot now. 
got a feel for him. One bad swing. It's a chain reaction. But that's a very good shot. Well done. Uh, for seven. A few players struggling up his 16th. Minicero, like many, this for his par. Benagi there with Matteo, ex-tour player. As we go to Soren Hansen, this for a par. <laughs> Very well done, this around the 67 for Soren. One over, has that got a chance, Mark? Yeah, that's just a couple too many. You wouldn't have thought so at the start of the day, but beginning to wonder now, yeah. Ken. Stuart Sink for an eagle. Seventh. Well, joining us in the box, anchor for CBS, legend of sports broadcasting in the US, Jim Nance. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Kenny. Wonderful to be here. And man, is it changing by the second around here today. I'm quite uh, fascinated by you know, that what Ernie and Justin have done here, playing together. And it's a shame they've messed up the 16th, but a little magic at 17. I, you know, I think. Coming here and post a little 280 right now. Got a chance. I think you could be right. We've been talking all week about uh, the value of experience. Well, this boy's 21 and he was fifth last year. He's looking like he could go four better. Maybe we're overrating experience. I remember he did the same thing last year at Brookdale in the final round. I believe it was the 10th hole, 11th hole, where. Ran into a little mistake, but uh, this is a pretty impressive back-to-back -back open. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely amazing. <clears throat> we saw Miguel Angel Jimenez chip in for birdie at 16. He followed that up with a bogey at 17, so he's looking like he's out of it. We've been there talking we about an old winner. Yeah, we could end up having the third youngest. Wouldn't that be a story? Too well to beat young Tom Morris, though, at the age of 14. Hmm. Huge putt for Lee Westwood. Oh, it would turn a little more than that. So, Aaron T shot costing the stroke. Back to one under. Talking about Lynx golf all week, Jim, but uh, are there actually any real Lynx courses in the States? I don't think there's anything like this. And they talk about Pebble Beach being Pebble Beach golf Lynx. Look at this for triple bogey. My goodness, what a mess. And going after that start. And he's looking, what, three shots at one time. The lead number is two under. Tom Watson's back into a share of the lead. Yeah, there it is. Incredible. Chris Wood from England and Tom Watson two under tied for the lead. Four guys one under chasing them. And anyone on that board could have a chance. Although Elson Manasero getting right to the ends of the rounds. You'd have to think you'd have to be under par. Phillips down there watching Matthew Goggin. Well, he's still got a long way to go. 229 yards. Wind seems to be into him a little bit more now. Ooh, Never can tell whether it just nestled down in a little cuppy lie or not. From as far away as he was, not a bad shot. The statistics as well. This fifth fairway is actually the easiest fairway to hit on the golf course. I think most players have it an iron. But, uh, of course, if Tom Watson keeps it in his drive and hitting the fairways, uh, certainly this week he's shown the kids how to do it. It's trouble everywhere, as we noticed from Ross Fisher. And Tom thinks he can get there with a four iron. Bringing back the years, eh? 204 yards into the wind off the left, a four iron. 
Well, the reason this hole is so difficult is that you have to hit it over the left-hand bunkers. That makes it hard then to hold the green. We saw uh, Matt Dogging a straight over. Tom Watson's has hung left. A little unluckily. The most difficult hole over the first three days. Mm, you take your four here any day. I keep thinking of the start he had on Friday. Where after he shot 65 the first round. He had that stretch of five bogeys and six holes and then right at the ship. Here's Westwood now at the sixth. Yes, if Watson does with it, he'll look back on that patch as gutsy. I've stood back on that tee all week long. Again, just came over here on holiday, and I've been fascinated to watch. It is so intimidating, um, visually intimidating from the tee. And yet, uh, as always, they make it look so easy. How will Fisher rebound? His first task is a, to hit this very difficult green with a two iron. It's going to be okay, Jim. Just well, it's always tricky. A left tin wind coming off the left. That's going to end up quite good. Yes, that did well for him. Steady the ship. Now Chris Wood. Can he keep this run going? Brilliant goal. Four under for the day. Tied for the lead. His 13th hole pin tuck way back left. I've seen a lot of players miss the green left. Oh, what a glorious shot, but just uh -oh. too far. Ooh. Nasty bear bit. All that uh, excitement coming in with Fisher and Westwood in the penultimate pairing, and then all of a sudden Chris Woods sharing the lead. If he's seen a leaderboard, he'll have got the shock of his life, I think, and a number of other players will suddenly realize they're in with a chance. The hands will start to sweat a little and start to think what they could achieve. Well, this is the fourth shot on the par 5 seventh for Retief Goosen. Drove it into a left-hand bunker. Four iron into here. It's got a chance here, back up the hill into the wind. Beautiful. I really thought the goosen fury pairing might produce some magical results but hasn't been the case so far two major champions yes a lot of experience in that two ball We're not out of it though that's for sure we're very pleased to have uh, the main man at CVS Jim Nance in the commentary box thank you Ken <laughs> Really, just completely dazzled by this whole Open Championship. <laughs> Second time I've attended one. A bit different from the Masters. It really is. It's just so much fun to be here and be a part of it. See it. Huge shot here for Ernie at 17. Knock it on. Have a chance at an eagle, maybe. Oh. Very, very nice. Yeah, that was a honey of a shot. This really could put the cat amongst the pigeons. An eagle for Ernie would move him to one under, mm. just one behind him. Mm. He's through 17. Running a couple of hours ahead of the final pairing. Sit back for a while and see how maybe 279, 280 holds up for you. I would think it would do quite well. I was sitting just a few minutes ago with um, some of the American players um, back over at five first Watson. I know this is downhill. Mm. Well, take your four there, don't you? Anytime, Ken, right? Take a four and keep walking. Hardest hole this week, averaging about 4.5. 
Wes Fisher just up the average considerably. <laughs> yes. Was brave taking a driver off the tee. I think a lot of players today have to hit an iron. Trying to squeeze it between the bunkers. Fisher, can he back up an eight with a two? something to settle down with though and yeah well that's a good three at that hole at least the green's starting to look a little brown ball turning a little quicker than it has it was a heavy shower overnight or heavy rain overnight in Girvan. i don't know if they got it here at the course the greens are looking a little a little swifter general tilt of this green is from back to front this will move to the left he's got a great read from fisher A new man at two under. Brooks from Westwood and Woods. The WWWs. Looking pretty steady, too. They're sitting with some of the American players, and they said from afar, Davis Love actually just said this. He just finished a round of 69. So he almost looks like at times you catch a little glimpse of Chris Wood. He looks like Tom Watson from back in 1977 at Turnberry. Shaggy haired and all. anything like this Ken from well you can never tell at the open as we've seen I mean who would have thought Ross Fisher going one way Chris Woods going the other it's the sort of beauty of Lynx golf one bad shot suddenly you've got an eight one good one and you're heading in the right direction Chris Chris Wood playing with Justin Rose we haven't seen too much of him he's a couple over in the championships so going along fairly steadily even today this is Ernie Fregel by these length putts in uh, recent years. Can make up for a lot of them right here. Oh. Eighteen though, the whole location at eighteen is definitely in a pretty position. Up another one there at 17. Well, I wonder how important that damage limitation of Westwood's at number five is going to play a part in this championship. <coughs> that two was just magnificent a two iron into that green and a great cross slope putt. And here he is, joint leader. Par five, snaking right to left, dog leg. He'll be aiming on the two bunkers on the right hand side. Very harsh crosswind blowing on it across this fairway, which the way the whole dog legs, the way the whole dog legs, makes it very difficult to find the fairway. The ball tends to kick to the right, the wind off the left. You've really got to walk the tightrope to find this fairway. If you do, there's a birdie opportunity. In fact, we've seen eagles and albatrosses. <laughs> well, one albatross, Paul Lowry. <laughs> Seems to like it. Is it over the corner onto the fairway? Yeah. Oh, what a tee shot. Stay there. Oh, brilliant from Westwood. Now that makes this hole a really great birdie chance. Just a long iron from there. Wonderful tee shot. Chris Wood, 13 for par. Seven, Fisher. Trying to steady the boat here. And Westwood was signaling left. Back in the left of the gold, some pretty thick old rough over there. Huh? 
Well, you couldn't write the script, Jim. Not if you tried. It's a script that uh, it keeps changing, but I bet Tom Watson had to wonder at one time if he'd ever see the lead again after he bogeyed the third hole and was three back. Now he shares it again. Oh, just over the top of that bunker and a good birdie opportunity coming up at the sixth. There'll be a few guys praying for that sort of a bounce. Uh, Jay Haas said recently the difference between praying on a golf course and praying in a church is that on a golf course, you really mean it. But <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't get answered. <laughs> Hops on. Wood for a bogey over at 13. Very flat piece of green. This is actually quite a tricky one to see the line. Nicely done. The greens here at turn, we have some sort of tilt or slope on it, but that little like, left edge of the 13th fairly flat. We're wondering over in America where Chris Wood has been since since he kind of made his debut last year at the Open. We keep them hidden over here till they're ready, Jim. Uh, and a Cerro 17 has lost it left. Oh. <laughs> You've done a good job, Mark. Need a medical checkup after that. That blow. Jimenez. That's a par. The man who led the championship day one with 64. Coming on shoot 69. Plus two total, currently in 15th spot. Playing there with J.B. Holmes, the mercurial American. He shot an 80, but he'll be back. A lot of talent there with him. Good week for the Mechanico. Can't get over at six. away a shot at the second and the fourth holes. Not sure I've ever seen a man in the final pairing so uh, overlooked. You know the Watson story was just so enormous. I thought Tom's interview though with us here on the BBC before the round he was again as he always is he doesn't pull any punches. He, he flat out said the enormity of it. He was feeling it today for the first time all week. <laughs> Seemed a little nervous to me. And it may have shown up in those first couple of holes. Look at Fisher at seven. Fisher back in potentially wrist damaging country here. He's got one of his most lofted clubs out. Really just trying to get this back onto the fairway. Yeah, if you can do that, he'll be able to reach for three comfortably. So it doesn't have to be too aggressive. Just get it back on the short stuff. Oh my. Mentally, maybe he can come back from an eight, but I don't know realistically how many times anybody's made a quad and won a major championship, particularly in the yeah. final round. Good question. Not too often, I wouldn't think. I think you're right about Watson, though. He does seem a little tentative. Yeah, watch this. The right hand flies off the club just after impact. Well, no, a long way after impact. A lot of effort required. Now, Watson for the outright lead for birdie at the sixth. The number one on the low side. See anything in that stroke today, Mark, that uh, looks any different from the first three days? Yeah, this, I mean, you know, it's not the greatest stroke in the world. He whips it inside and shut, doesn't he? But over the first three days, it's been very, very solid. And he's driven the ball long, straight, and hit a lot of green, so. The goose at eight, only one back. Get up that slope. As you can see, right into the wind today. That's beautiful. One thing I've noticed about Watson's putting, the balls are not reaching the hole. They, they're kind of uh, just 
reaching the front lip. Now westward. Can you run it up the garden path here? Three iron. You can. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's a wonderful shot. How about that for a little gem? A pearl up Lee Westwood, eagle chance, under the hole, putting up the hill, easiest putt he could have left himself. Absolutely, Ken, and a putt for a two-shot lead. That would be something. Can someone break away from this pack? All there, Chris Wood, three under for the day. Else one to go, he needs a birdie to set a target. Another brilliant amateur there, a couple of holes to go. One over in ninth spot, brilliant. Luke Donald having a good day, couple under. Now Ross Fisher, Maury. Well, Ross Fisher protected from the breezes for a moment on the sunken fairway. This is it a little punch in with a six iron? Luke's got it again, a bit high. Nearly got away with it. Mm. Loves playing aggressively, Jim, does uh, Ross Fisher. I love that aggressive lash by Lee Westwood. It was uh, a significant moment for, for Lee. I know that he could have really gotten in serious trouble with the fifth, but uh, got to like his chances right now. Wind is back. really whipping across on the seventh tee. That's another good tee shot from Tom. Hasn't lost that part of his game, has he? Oh, that's a tremendous tee shot. He's a little bit worried. He was just drifting on the breeze. And a little reach there, but can kick the ball to the right. But you're OK, Tom. Perfect spot. In trouble again now at 14. there we've been talking all week about you know you can do some damage on the wrist that's maybe the best example I've seen all week well in this country health and safety could come in and cut the rough down <laughs> he did very well to get that back out in play okay. that's not good Coming down the stretch here. Tender wrist. He's 21. He'll heal before the next shot. You better hope. Is the eighth green on the horizon? Played in this direction here. The goose is up there. Well, relatively straight put here for the goose. Fantastic arrow straight four iron from 208 to get to here. Expose it is here. Wind buffeting him about. Trying to keep the cap on. This green looks a little faster. This should have a bit of movement from right to left. And the goose will have this to join the leaders. Latif Goose. Two-time US Open champion. This is a little slow for him, but hmm. the greens at Shinnecock when he he won his second US Open, they were almost unplayable, as you remember. I do remember they were brutal, but the uh, USGA got quite a bit of stick. Yes, they did. <laughs> that seventh green in particular. Now, yeah. Ernie needs. You got to think one more. Playing 18. Although I wouldn't rule out even even par. Hope you luck. Oh. I don't know what happened there. That took an enormous bounce coming off the fairway. Then he had another one. I don't know whether he mishit it or just misjudged the breeze. I really thought that the second bounce was going to check and stop right next to the hole. Now, eagle attempt. Westwood, seven. 
gone by when Lee's got a glimpse of the pay window he's never frightened to run through it not frightened to win third shot at 14 Chris Wood Significant little swing on this putt for a par. Well, it's not going right for him, but boy, will he learn from today. Mm. Even if he does it badly at the end of the day, I'll do him a lot of good. Ernie now from over the back at 18. Knocked one in from off the green at 13. Maybe he's got one more. Run it out. Well, who knows? He may have acted in the open. Ben Curtis never quite knew what it was for. Eventually, as the number. Long, long way to go. Starting to see some signs last week that you know, the Ernie's game was coming back around. There's Goggin. There are two on the par five seventh. That's Watson second at seven from 250 right. yards with a three wood. I think he likes it. Shot from Tom Watson. Just his range, too. Tough 454 yard par four hole into the breeze. Bunker out right. Fairway. Yeah, love that one. You come off the seventh hole where you really come to the par five, knowing you, you got to make four at the worst, really. Uh, of course, Westwood makes three, but then you got eight, nine, ten, and you know, eleven. Of course, <laughs> no bargain <laughs> either. Oh my <laughs> goodness, what a this, this is breathtaking. This truly is like Pebble Beach and for us back in the states along the coast. Fisher who came to the fifth hole was three in front and now is five behind. Starting to go the wrong way for Chris Wood is for par. Can he save one? Oh, what a good putt. directly back into the stiff breeze. It won't be the, the last person to take five on that hole. Full 50 yards uphill into the breeze. But that's back-to-back uh, -back bogeys with a 21-year-old. <laughs> and a Sarah, we saw him short of the green in two in the thick stuff. Chopped it out to here. He's got a par 17. He needed to make birdie. Oh, a lovely play by the young Italian. Mm. 
product of wonderful junior golf programs around. In fact, my nephew won a tennis tournament the other day. Well done, Charlie. This is 18. Justin Leonard. What a nice little match going today, didn't they? Leonard and Els. Looks like a round of 68 with a double bogey on the card at 16. Terrific. One over par. And the Look at that. A lot of red on there. From the eighth hole on. How about eight, nine? A pair of threes. And a deuce at 11. Now Ernie Els, can he make the crucial putt? Get in there, Ernie. Five at the last an approach that looked like it might be stiff and stymie right next to the flag stick. Bounds over the green, makes five. I could have, might have been there for Ernie. We'll see it in his face. Chuck Goggin at the seventh. Day and Chip, you know, real pleasure to have you. It, Enjoy it, the rest of your holes. It's uh, for for me, you know, I've just relished the chance as a passionate golf fan and as such a huge fan of the uh, of the RNA and the Open Championship to come over here and experience it, see what the great fans are like over here. It's really something that's almost hard to describe. And thank you for having me. Been great having you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Big Tommy Watson has got an eagle chance. A bender from left to right, down the slope. Quite a big swing. Sort of down the slope and then it levels out. You've got to make sure you hit it high enough and firm enough. Hang, hang on. It's hanged up immediately. Gives you an idea how the greens are just shining up a little. Have that for his birdie to move within one of Westwood. This is intriguing, really is intriguing. Let's watch it. Watson's this putt comes from quite a high angle, doesn't keep his putter as low as some players and hits the ball right. Look at that, it's sort of amazing, he hasn't started rolling it. Fantastic shot, hits it right in the equator. Well, after a perfect three wood off the tee, Retief's got 145 left to this reasonable pin. It's a good pin, an accessible pin here on nine today. Wind off the left hand side, got to land it shortish though. Can't pitch it up by the flag. Let it release from right to left down toward the flag. Just a wedge for Retief. There's some little contours into the left of the pin that you can use here, it will gather up. With the pin at the back, you've got some landing area as well. And two under with Goggin, Lee Wessett at minus four. Matthew Goggin, this for birdie on seven. Far away, he's got it. The Goggin, back to two under, one over for the day. Two behind Lee Wessett. for birdie. Well done, Thomas. And he goes three under par, one behind Westwood. 59-year-old Tom Watson. No pal of mine, nothing largs. Les Ward, Tartan Bookie Basher. Happy 50th today, Les.
having Grady's come in. Second shot of Westwood on eight. Four iron. Just go on a touch right, is it? But safely on the top level. Andrew Cotter's back in too. We got a battle on our hands here, Andrew. Certainly do. And this man is still far from out of it despite back to back bogeys. Par 3, 15th. Chris Wood. Nice pin to get out of this one. All gathers at the back of the green. Oh, look at this shot here. What a shot. Chris Wood. on the back edge. Magnificent shot. Chris Wood. Trying to post the number. Level par four behind at the moment. Another really challenging tee shot for Tom Watson. This one on the eighth. Just perfect. Turns it back against the wind. He's driving the ball magnificently, Sam. It's always been one of his strongest points. Lovely rhythm. There's no hit in the swing. Just a good turn to follow through. He's wondering what's going on about him. Now Matthew Goggin. I think Tom Watson decided it's a lot easier off the fairway, so that's what he's doing, making it look easy. Ooh. Tom's getting that out there because Matty's he's big and strong and very long. Doesn't feel the cold coming from Tasmania. Blows like this all the time down there. This is nothing. Now up to the youngest man in the field and a long par attempt at the 18th. Run out. And it very, very nearly did. What a, a championship it's been for Matteo Manasero. It's going to be a drop shot at the last, a drop shot at the 16th, a stumble to the finish perhaps, but before that it was smooth, it was serene, it was wonderful stuff from the 16-year-old amateur who has a big future ahead of him and he has the silver medal as leading amateur to collect. A hug from Alberto Binaghi, the former tour player, and applause from all. His championship is done, but it is beginning to warm up for all the rest going for the bigger prize. That gets him back in next year too, I think, doesn't it? Oh, no, he's Richard just Johnson. fallen to 14. Sorry, Sam, Richard Johnson. It's for birdie on 10. There's one over at the moment. He's back to level. And he's sneaking up on them. One under today. Level par for the championship. Four behind Westwood. You see it, Westwood four under, Tom Watson three, Goggin two, and the formidable pair of Sink and Goosen on one under. And here he is, shaggy of hair and strong of heart, a birdie punt at the 15th for Chris Wood, back to back bogeys at 13 and 14. What a tee shot this was. Looks a wee bit like Prince Harry. Could be a prince in a few holes. This for birdie. Be excited. The fact that he was in there last year stands him in good stead. He'll know the feelings. Long across the green putt for Westwood. Straight back into the wind. Nicely done. He's going about his business. One hole at a time, one shot at a time. This for birdie. This to get to two under. Is it left? Just pulled it. That's a par for Goosen. Out and one over. Minus one. After the championship still right there. Now 
birdies for Goosen. The final group has reached the eighth hole down on the left there. And the penultimate group up on the green. Fisher. One finds the bottom of the cup. Ross Fisher still fighting, but it's been a struggle for him. So many shots frittered away over the last few holes. We saw Goosen on the ninth green there. He's playing with Jim Furyk, who's out three over, plus two for the championship. And look at that there. Went to the fourth tee, three ahead, I think he was at that point. And then disaster struck. Westwood for four. Solid. Westwood marches on to the ninth tee. Two under for the day, four under for the championship, leading. He'll have dreamt about this since he was a ten-year-old. And now it's reality. Same so came so close to the famous Woods win with a broken leg. He lost by a shot in that one. Missed the playoff by one shot. What a chance here. Ten holes to play. One shot ahead. This is the first time he's actually led a major, isn't it, Sam? Lee, I think so. This is still a new experience for him, as close as he got to the US Open at, uh, in San Diego last year. So now he's in the lead of the Open Championship on his own. Down there in the corner, the ninth tee. And back here at the eighth, Tom Watson, a little hybrid in his weathered paws. Yeah, he's been getting a lot of use out of this hybrid. He used it on the same hole yesterday, knocked it 15 feet. 204 yards into the wind. Wind's got it a little bit. Stay there. Just a little swale at the back, but a bit of green to play with. From A to Y, the names will go along the bottom of your screen. And it is the W's who lead Westwood by one from Watson. This has been one of the most difficult fairways to hit all week. And as we look back at Westwood perched out there on that perilous tee, he's got a three wood in his hand. Pick the tee up, it's usually a good sign. Oh, that's a magnificent tee shot from Westwood, the hardest fairway in the course to hit. And he's a wee bit unlucky, but not too bad. It's pinned back right, so that's a difficult angle to get to it, but the wind is off the left. Goggin at the eighth. A few yards closer than Tom Watson, so 200 yards or so. Staring it down. <laughs> Very well done. Looks to settle down Wayne Matthew Goggin. A poor start, but it's right there. Yeah, it certainly takes a little bit of time. A couple of bogeys get your attention, but it's good to see him on the way back. Sink, third shot. At 10. Stops nicely. Really don't like this new 10th hole. I just, the two bunkers in the middle of the fairway. Ugh. Either hit five iron off the tee or try hit driver over the bunkers. Now, this is Luke Donald on 17. He has this to go one under. He couldn't, could he? It's online. Oh, what a wonderful effort. And that gets him to level par if he taps that in. One under leading in the clubhouse. Chris Wood on the 16th tee, just an iron. 155-yard par four. 
I like it behind, that's generally a good sign. Oh, that is perfect. Good shooting forward bounce there. Donald just to tap in. He will hope for his birdie at the 17. Birdie at 15. Birdie at 17. Level par for the championship. Three under for his round. A tie for seventh place at the moment. This is the kind of chip shot that Tom Watson's hold many times. Plenty of green to work with. A little unlucky his second shot rolled as far as it did forcing him to have to pitch the ball Stuart Sink besides third shot into green he's missed his power putt this for bogey Drop shot on 10, sink. Go back to level par, one over today. Every shot crucial now. Westwood, one ahead of Watson. Goggin, one behind them. And then Wood, Goosen. Luke Donald coming down the last. Richard S. Johnson going well. Hanson Leonard in the clubhouse at plus one. That's the figure being set. Back down to Young Goggin. Just a little bit tentative. Sam is saying, steadied himself. After early jitters, a drop shot at second in the fourth, but a birdie at seven it should be a par at eight to stay two under. David Hull finishing off. <laughs> David Hull finishes off, 76. And with Oliver Wilson, with a 70. Score for Oliver Wilson. Poor finish there from David Howe. Tom Watson to save par on eight. I feel as though he just needs one really good solid putt and he'll be way. Very nice. That's what he's done so well over this week. He's held some great par putts to keep the, the rounds going. A couple of bombs for birdies, but that was a very important putt. Only 102 left for Westwood. He must really feel this is like a home venue. The support he is getting is fantastic from these gamblers. So there so far, coming down and off the left of the wind, but a good body opportunity to come for Westwood. Four under par, one in front. situation for the young man he can pick up a couple of birdies in the last three who knows a little bumped up that's fine 16 is very very dangerous special up front right pin the horses are watching Three wood off the tee for the goose, absolutely spot on. Just into the right-hand semi, but he's got a nice lie, 124 yards to go. It's just a wedge, but the wind is beating across from left to right. Reasonably accessible pin, front right. Just get the good contact landing on the front of the green and let it just work down to that pin. I 
distance, hard to judge here. Now the seven up will feed back down. Won't get any nearer, but it'll become an easier part from there. Quite as much makes almost exactly what we saw Chris Wood bowling. It's very fast and a big swing off the left. Richard S. Johnson on 12, second shot. Hold on, stay up. Okay, it did. He's actually supposed to be defending champion this week at Milwaukee in America, but he's over here playing in the Open Championship, his first Open Championship. The Swede, who now lives in the US, played a lot of his golf in Australia, won in 2002. The ANZ Championship. His grandfather was an American who settled in Stockholm. That's where the Johnson comes from. No, Luke Donald. Of 18 fairway. Can he post a figure? Do you love to burn this? Oh, it's got a nice bounce. Oh, that was a good bounce from that hollow. Will it hold on? Oh, it certainly will. It certainly will. We're going to have a new clubhouse leader in a minute. We'll have that to do one under for the championship. So was he just Richard S before, was he? I don't know what the S, you know what the S stands for, but it's certainly not Johnson. He's Johnson. Donald going along very nicely, just creeping up there. If you can get to one under par. Westwood. This is his pro shot in slow mo. Wow. Just a sand wedge, so the elevation coming off the club face was high. Seen just about everyone miss this left, Sam. I just haven't hit it high enough. This is going to come from right to left for Westwood, down the slope. First one, two. There you go. And he was way wide. So McDonald didn't play in the Open Championship last year because of that wrist injury on the top of the Tiger Woods, who was missing with his ailments, but Luke Donald wasn't here either. Doesn't have the best record in the Open, but perhaps all to be written off with one good finish here this year. Level part at the moment, three under for his round. And a 15 foot birdie putt to come for who knows what. Looking down on the 16th green here, Chris Wood eyeing off this long birdie attempt from the back of the green to get to two under. driving at 17 possibly so he's going to wait playing alongside Justin Rose and Justin Rose one over for his round three over for the championship back there soon Stuart Sink this is for Bernie drop one on ten would love to get it straight back. Comes in from the left. Oh, oh, far away. Yeah. He's got it. Well, Stuart Sink now goes into the right one on the car. What a finish we've got coming up. So here it is, long part for Chris Wood. We saw it bouncing with a fiery hop. His second shot right at the pin. We've seen some great ones hold on here, Andrew. Tom Watson twice. Him and S chipped in from behind earlier. So this will come a bit off the left. Here we go. It's on its way. It's a good line. It's a, no, just going to miss right. Beautiful speed. Lovely putt from Chris Wood. His nerves are obviously good. 
of a bit more right hand and knock it four or five feet past, but that was lovely speed. Goosen on 10, it's a big swinger for Birdie. It's a, oh, just an ounce more would have held the line. Tom Watson had a really good lie, but didn't get the contact he wanted on that one. Just going with a nine iron. I'm not sure what happened. He is about uh, 15 yards short of the green, just in the fringe. Disappointed with that one, Tom. When he knocked that putt in on the last green, he just mumbled to himself there, that's better. Good stroke. Crucial putt you hold on the eighth. He's going to have another one here on nine. Matt Doggan. Matthew just going with a wedge. The lie's not great, but should be able to control it. Strong wind off the left. Although he didn't get the best of contacts, needs a big bounce. Oh, right on the front edge. Come up soft, well spotted. Phil. Both players struggling for par on nine. <laughs> Powerful young man, Matthew Goggin. Well, not that young anymore. He's 35 years old. But he is a very strong, simple golf swing, effective. down on the spectacular coastline the lighthouse but uh, far away from that Luke Donald for a birdie on the 18th and by inches it stays out so it will be a round of 67 for Luke Donald and a total which is posted here is the leader in the cup house for now at level par and probably just a, a couple too many, but he has laid down the marker. Luke played with last week's winner in America, Steve Stricker. Steve shot a round of 76 for a total of nine over. Now Richard Johnson on 12. This for Birdie. It's a long one. Excellent part from there. He's still one under for the day. Level part of the championship, four behind Westwood. So just wandered on at three and a half feet or so. Look at someone who could compose Chris Wood. One under for the championship, par five to come. And 71 yards back to this flag on the 11th, just a nine iron for Retief. Really the only way you can play this hole, you just hit it to that gap, the opening at the front of the green, landed at the front edge, just carried a few yards too long. Not a very good life for Tom, he'll have to try and run it along the ground. that one and the man in second place is struggling Thomas Aiken South African for birdie and 13th mm, and he goes to one under South African is showing a lot of skills this year starts out in the Sunshine Tour won a couple of times they are now playing full time in the European Tour big talent now this is back to Matthew Goggin from the front edge of nine long long putt down the green here it comes it does come in off that side it's a little fiery it 
Two bad though. Well, Westwood just lent on his tee shot a fraction, took driver off the tee. He's found this right hand rough, and now he really has got a decision to make. It's really snuggled down here. He's only got 121 left, but the key yardage really is to clear this big bunker with the island, with that heathery grass in the middle of it all. And he's got some 78 yards or so to get over that, so he has to take a good dig at it. It's just one of those in-between shots. You're never quite sure just how the ball is going to come out. He can't go round it. He's no option. He either goes over this huge bunker or he goes short of it, one or the other. Back to him. This is Watson on nine for par. Just off the left side. Downwind, downhill. Drop a shot at nine. Be a disappointing bogey there for, for Watson. A second shot expected to jump. Now, Maureen, he's got to get it over that little island there. We saw Ishikawa there earlier in the week. He's got to hold on hard and hit even harder. What a slash that was. That is well done. But 30 yards between that bunker and the green. That's made the putting surface, but I think it was a decent, a decent nudge. So at least he's avoided that bunker or that little island. Ishikawa had to take an unplayable out of that on Friday. Par. Just yeah. And it goes and looking steadier now. Matt Goggin reaches the turn in 36 after those two early drop shots. One back at the seventh. And just two behind Westwood, who has oh, troubles yeah. at the tenth. Nine holes to go. This is it. Retief Gusen on 11. Coming back down the hill, no birdie so far today for the goose. He's burning the edges of the holes, Ritty Christian. Just that one drop shot at the second, all the rest pars. But might need at least one red number on his card. Wood, 17, three wood. Par five, definitely reachable. Must hit the fairway. Oh, he has. Perfect tee shot from Chris Wood. It's quite a long way back. So I only get up from there. He can reach the green from there. And he stands on the 17th fairway in the middle and three behind Lee Westwood. A spot of bother at the 10th. Goggin and Watson, two under par. Stuart Sink creeping along nicely, as is Retief Husson, but no birdies for the South African so far. Luke Donald in the clubhouse, setting the target. Ernie Els just a couple of slips down the stretch, and 68 will not be good enough for him. Ross Fisher there, five over after nine, playing alongside this man. Why do the shoulders and bumps and hollows on this course always conspire to throw your ball away from the flag? There's an awkward one now between Westwood and the hole here. He's going for a low scuttler. Well, just held up on the fringe now. It's very fast downhill putt there for Westwood.
Matthew Cockin going with the driver on 10. Bunkers in the middle at 275 and 300. He's trying to batter it over or perhaps down the right of them. Wind helping a bit today. here at 13. It's a plateau green. He's another man making his open debut this year. He's doing wonderful things. Now, Westwood, drive right, left for the second pitch to here. Nathalie was saying, slippery quick. The error with that third shot was that he didn't manage to leave it below the hole. This is back into the wind, though, so downhill into the wind is a difficult combination. Good touch from Westwood. Tell you what, that was a horrible double triple breaker. Having a bit of each way there, Andrew. That was Finn sitting of the highest order. But he drops a shot Lee Westwood. And the top of that leaderboard squeezes a little bit closer again. Back to three under. This is Stuart Sink on twelve. This to get to two under, just one shot behind. Has he hit it? Not quite. Keep it four. Sink. Wind right to left here on the twelfth out with a driver for a thief. Work there following it, but he's knocked it into the bunker. It's an error from Goosen. So Manny Vice, I thought he was about to sail straight over Ailsa Craig. That's an accident waiting to happen there out in those choppy seas on the, the wave runner, but it's a great vantage point there up near the monument on the top of the 12th. You can see 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Ross Fisher, this for birdie on 10. Boy, does he need it. Huge swing. Stay up, stay up. So near yet so far. Just a par. And Ross Fisher there. They remain five over today. Plus two for the championship. Still not out of it. Still got eight holes to play. Westwood now by just one from the veteran. And the slightly more callow Matthew Goggin. Chris Wood nearing the end of his round as well. What a target he could post. Johnson for birdie on 13. Get there. Just a tough few holes here, 12, 13, 14. Just got to get through those with fours. And there's a couple of opportunities down the end. Even pars posted in the clubhouse. Players are already aware of that. Oh, uh, this could be crucial for Chris Wood. There's been a few players here had a chance. Leonard, Else. Leonard finished 6 4 4. Else 5 4 5. Chris Wood 4 4 finish. We'll put him in the clubhouse at 2 under. And what a chance that'll have. Long iron. Wind off the right. I think he likes it. So Watson bounce there, yes, and kick right up onto the green. 
That's not disastrous. Tricky chip there, though. That's a pin position where uh, in 77, isn't it, where Nicholas missed that four-footer, five-footer to tie Watson. And here is the man. After two years later. Target back on Song again. Just a shot behind Lee Westwood. Some of his swings today have just looked a little bit tentative, Sam, haven't they? They're just not, not a, aggressive. But that was a great shot there. Got the bounce he was after. Well, by his own admission, he woke up this morning and was feeling a tad different than he was yesterday. Oh. Even he said he was nervous. But he's right there, one shot behind, nine to go. Who would have believed that? Well, the wind is more down than across here at this short par 3 11th, which does make it significantly easier than it was a couple of days ago. It's a nine iron for Westwood, pinned very central today. Difficult to get close with a pin just over the bunker. So going left and Slightly long, but getting better. Better still on the putting surface. That's okay. You're saying it should be all right. It is, Lee. It is. Back edge. Very fast. Walk to Tunbury for charity. Lee West will be crawl over broken glass for the claret jug. He has a wonderful chance now. After a huge tee shot, just a little sand iron for Matthew Gogg in second to ten. Fabulous shot from Gogg in there, almost jumped it into the hole. He's only one shot behind. My word. <laughs> You don't look away from this. Lee Westwood dropping a shot at the 10th. Leading by one from Tom Watson and Matthew Goggin, both of them with pretty good birdie chances. Chris Wood on the par 5, 17th. Wayne Grady was speculating about Lee Westwood leading a major for the first time. If memory serves me right, he'd led the Masters of Augusta back in 1999, going into the back nine, but really got blown out of the water around Amen Corner, finished tied six in the end. But Watson, downhill left to right for his birdie. Oh. The great thing is he's hanging on in there. Certainly not a reprise of Greg Norman last year. Yeah, anyway. We're gonna fell away eventually on the Sunday. It would be one of the great sporting achievements of all time if you could go ahead and win this. It would break so many records in golf, it's just ridiculous. The greatest gap between first and last win in open is 19 years jh taylor watson will be 34 years goggin oh for a really good birdie in my word how he is fighting back joins lee westwood at three under par joint leaders that confirms it watson just missing his birdie time with Birdie Park. Not far away. It's not far away. Oh, what an effort from Lee Westwood. Just a bit sneaky with his caddy there, Billy Foster. I thought that was going in. I did too. What a great effort. 
was showing courtesy to Ross Fisher there, marking his ball. He'd have been standing in Ross Fisher's through line. Chris Wood. Yeah, come on, Chris. Look at the angle he's coming into that pin from. Done pretty well, I would say. The wind off the right and the ball kicking right on the green. It was going to be a little awkward. Have that for a birdie to get to two under. What's the news with Retief Goose and Paul? Well, unfortunately, he found the fairway bunker off the tee wedged out and a very very poor wedge shot from 104 yards and now he's got virtually all the length of this green to go for a par four he's gone back to the putter that he won the US Open with Accessible today, but always cross winds. It's amazing holes 10 through 15 all change in direction, they sort of weave through the golf course. So each hole, the wind has a different effect on it. Chris Wood for birdie is to get within one of the lead off the right hand side. Slow, stay up, stay up. Oh, yes, Chris Wood goes two under. Oh, that's fantastic. One shot behind, one hole to play. He showed nerves of steel. Just 21 years of age, fifth last year. And his heart will be thumping so hard right now. Well, there's no doubt about that. That was right into the middle of the cup at the perfect pace. That's two lovely swings. Decent chip. Experienced man on the bag there, Mark. Absolutely. His name escapes me for the moment, but Dave he's been Neely. around. Dave McNeely, yeah. Of course it is. Yes, he's been around the block a few times. Had it for Harrington for a while, didn't he? 11th tee. That was Matt Goggin. No, Tom Watson. Just a 9-9 for Tom Watson downwind, 171. Difficult to stop it quick enough to get close though. As you go straight at it, you hit the down stop off the back of the bunk and shoot to the back of the green. Oh, you could at least have done to work it in from the right. So two well played shots for Goggin and Tommy Watson. That was right hip replaced in October. A couple of months to rehabilitate, but you couldn't tell now, would you? Amazing. Harry Varden didn't have that advantage. Stuart Singh, second to 13. Perfect tee shot. All the way to the bin. Well, this is John Daly. The greatest of days so far, plus four. This is for an eagle. Oh, the day's looking up a bit now. Lovely three. Four of the last for 72. Plus four, that would be. And that would finish about the 25th, 26th. Got to believe the 17th is going to have a pivotal hole today, somehow or other. Par 5 to Westwood at the 12th. I think you're right, Ken, because there's quite a few guys need a birdie. Yeah, the lunch is rough on the right, it's devilishly deep. Left is not much better. Oof. Just starting to miss a few lead. He 
have structure holes. This is the little eleventh here. Twelfth runs in the opposite direction up the hill there where Lee Westwood is playing. Exposed areas. Stuart Singh, this to get within one. Far away. Always oh, hold it. And Stuart Singh goes to two under par. Birdie on 13, one under for the day, two under for the championship. Just one behind. And Matt Goggin has the chance to have the outright lead if this birdie putt goes in on 11. Six people under par at the moment. Three under leads. Tom Watson's hardly missed a shot all day, maybe the second to the first and then the second to nine, everything else he's hit so well, giving himself birdie opportunities on nearly every single hole. And if this one goes in, he will be tie the lead, three under with Lee Westwood and Matt Goggin. just one behind them five all together as you say Sam sorry I'm dreaming can't believe it anything could happen here a tough one for Westwood here well he's lining up like he's got a shot to the green he's not chipping it out so he's been fortunate to get a lie it's a reasonable lie, Sam, but there's a bit of a clump behind the ball, so anything up in the vicinity of the green is a result. This is a five iron. There's a very dangerous bunker, 30 yards short and right. Well, he's a very strong boy, Westwood. But he couldn't get it through the wind with any real penetration, but that'd give him a chance. About 50 yards, he would hit some sort of a chippy run-up. Westwood, Watson and Goggin, all three under. And then Chris Wood on the 18th, minus two. Stuart Sink after 13, minus two. Donald in the clubhouse. That was Chris Wood off the 18th. Must hit the fairway. Settle. Settle. Okay. Straight down wind from there, so no problem reaching the green. Don da John Daly. It's for power in a round of 72. <laughs> a pretty decent home for John. Playing better golf this year. 
Supreme Course in 1995. Twelfth hole, straightest hole on the golf course. Wind off the right and slightly hurting. Tom Watson has been using this right to left wind very nicely, starting it down the right and just allowing the wind to bring it back. But the bunkers are waiting down the left if he overdoes it. There, Tom. I get away with it. A little bit of magic with the short game here. He did well to get it to here, Ken. He'll just pitch this one just a yard or two on the green. Oh, just caught the edge of the hole, almost hit the pin. Wonderful shot from Westwood. Wonderful shot from Westwood there, almost hold it. Westwood kept it safe off the tee. It's given him a shot in, and yeah, beautiful shot out of that right hand rough, but just rolling over the back. Now, it's a maker, it's a holdable chip back into the wind. What a wonderful performance by this lad, 21 years old, fifth last year, aiming to do better this year. But, well, he's known he was right in there for a while in this round. Hasn't faltered. A couple of bogeys on 13 and 14, but then birdies on 15 and 17. And he's looked rock solid, really. That must have looked great to a mark in the air. That shot was oh. just right out of the flag, wasn't no, it? No hard. What a wonderful strike. It's a wonderful feeling this, walking up the 18th, and when you had a great open crowds either side. Justin Rose, just as a couple over today, but even for the championship. I mean, even today, a couple over for the championship. It's in 14th position. Yeah, good open for Justin, too. of practice have boiled down to moments just exactly like this. Power saving attempt for Westwood a little bit off the left. The ones that have cost them in the past, it's holding them today. And he still leads. Hill there, as Mark said, wonderful viewing point. So his chances of victory may have gone at the 14th there. 
see the steepness of the slope. He's got to come up there, and then it's downhill to the pin. Just got to lob it up on the edge of the green. And remember the one that Justin Rose, his playing partner, hold as an amateur to finish fourth. I think this one will get an even bigger roar. say is this for a 65 and is this to tie the lead could well be this to win the open Sam set the target three under may well be good enough He can still win the Open if he holds that. There's only one shot behind. Tom Watson couldn't ask for a better lie, but just under 200 yards remaining. Good angle, though. Line. It wasn't because he got such a good line, so he could play out the rough so well. He was, uh, I remember in Birkdale in 83 when I played with him, he was unbelievably good out the rough. Very strong hands and forearms. Good looking shot from Matthew Goggin. Nice, nice. Not bad. Back into a freshening breeze there at the 12th. Point four, just five birdies, twenty-four bogeys. There are three bunkers down the left here, and the spot that Westwood will be aiming for is between the first and second bunkers. Just wants to keep it short of that two eighty bunker. Hey Charlie. It. Last few holes, it's been more crooked than an MP's expenses. <laughs> He's showing a lot of guts. Chris Wood. Can he read it? Can he read it? Now? Oh. on his face he's clubhouse leader minus one and a wonderful round of golf in the last round of a major championship difficult birdie pot for Tom Watson but this is, has been his length so far this week Yesterday, I think, wasn't he? But put into a different pin position. I don't know if it's part of his plan just to pop it on top of that mound every day. <laughs> so do we sink? Third shot. So you've got a decent line. It's coming out of the rough. It's going to run a little bit more than wood off the fairway. Scoot forward. <laughs> Club 
Dog in for birdie. It's a little weak. Tight to the lead though, Matthew Goggin, level today. Oh, surely not. Just take your time, pal. Even Ken Brown wouldn't knock one of them in without lining it up. <laughs> well, he's going to have a go, despite having Tom Watson's marker between his legs. Well, he plays Tom Stanley and he's this bit uh, in a sevy spot. thought awkward one for Watson wind off the right inside right he's tending to t pull it back on the inside a little bit the putter and just pull it through come on top straight in oh there you go got it off just Billy Mayfair the way he used to putt but it's working and Tom Watson six holes to go still leads the open 59 years of age Challenges to those leading three are being weeded out. Chris Wood bogeyed the last to drop back to minus one. Stuart Sink has a tricky one to hold for par. Here's Westwood. Well, there's been a lot of deliberation over this shot by Le Lee Westwood. This is such a difficult green to hold. It's like a tabletop. That was a nine iron. Beautiful control. Just going along. Trying to contain his excitement. Sink. For his part. Chip towing backwards as well. So lots of Goggin and Westwood now. Two ahead of the field. Fish on 13, hoping to emulate Westwood's attempt. All pars since his bad patch ended at the eighth. And that's a good shot. And something to happen in court. Still get back into the top five or six in this championship. That would be a reward for his first three days. South African Thomas Aitken, this for birdie on 16, just to get back to level. And only three behind with a par five coming up. He's got it. And he's enjoyed it. He's won about nine times in South Africa. It's first up. Oh, boy, is he having a ball. He's a rare talent, Sam. This, if he finishes top ten here, it'll be seventh top ten in 14 starts in Europe this year, which is pretty impressive. There we see it, Westwood, Watson and Goggin. Two ahead of the field. Chris Wood's finished. Sink needs something to happen in a big hurry. Border play for him. Aiken. He could make Eagle birdie, but still get up there. Elevated 13th tee. You look down on the fairway. Three bunkers down the left. Jungle down the right. Jack Carson. Yeah, oh. it's First shot he hits down there is with a three iron. This is open down on the practice ground after a few touches of the toes. No wonder he needed a new hit. <laughs> Sandy Lyle used to be able to do that, just step out and hit a driver. I'd have to spend three months in rehab if I tried that. Carlos Franco just goes on the first tee. This is Matthew Goggin. Go on, Matt. Tied yeah, for the lead. Six to play. Well, a perfect tee shot from him. Stops. Very close to that bunker, wasn't it?
Well, it seems a long time ago since Westwood was uh, almost the third man in the woods in Ishikawa grouping out on Thursday and Friday, and here the support he's receiving is absolutely tremendous. But, you know, Ross Fisher, he won't believe that he's out of this yet. He's five shots behind, but as we've seen, anything can happen, and very quickly at that. He's got his confidence back. He's hitting the ball well. He's had one or two great putts that have been unlucky. And he's got a great chance of birdie now. Not really any movement in this that I can see. Normally a pretty aggressive putter, Ross Fisher. Sink on 15. Very accessible pin today, right at the back. It all feeds into there to get it online. Pitch on the front of the green. It'll release all the way up to the back of the green. Just like that. Beautiful shot from Stuart Sink. Just made bogey on 14. He may get it back there. If there is a playoff, it's. 5, 6, 17 and 18, if there is a sudden death player, four holes, but there may not be. Now Westwood, this to take the outright lead. It's rolling nicely. Very flat piece of green, as I said earlier. Tricky to see the line, but he knows an opportunity missed. He's pushed it. Squeezed it in the turf a little bit. Westwood Goggin Watson, three under. Westwood moving to the very stiff par 14. Par four. 14th, this is a hole way in the distance there, that's the 14th. in that direction. It's about seven behind it. Well, we have to carry up the 158. 158 carry up on the left. So 176 to the pin, pinned back 35, but to carry it up on the left, over. On the line of the pin, 158, we heard him say. Phil. It's all about distance control, this shot. Wind off the right. off the tee and uh, very nearly did get into that bunker and missed it by about six feet. start for Goggin, bogey at the second and the fourth, he's come right back in, looks very settled. 
at 448 yards back into this breeze and uphill. This is a brute of a par four. The two new bunkers that were added on the right, the players just can't sniff them in today's conditions. Well, that was a cracker from Lee Westwood. He really put everything into that one. Always a danger when you do that, that you'll stray, but he's in perfect position. Down the 14th, third shot up ahead for Retief Goosen. The easiest of little shots over there, but managed to get, him some, get some check on it. He's played it beautifully. He can still do it. Level par. Francesco Molinari and Henrik Stenson have both just finished with 70s. They are two over par. James Kingston finished with a 72 at four over par. Brandon Grace, 75, seven over par. The sink looks to go to two under. Mulder, who's six over today and for the championship. Jim Churik having a surprisingly bad back nine. He's dropped three shots in four holes on the back nine. He's five over now for the championship, playing with the goose. But Watson, big moment here if he can drain another long birdie putt at the 13th. And the outright lead if it goes in. From Tom Watson. Boy, I tell you what, on these long putts, he scares it. That's a four for Watson. Moves to the 14th hole. At the moment, tied for the lead. Greg Norman led into the final nine holes last year only to fade away, but Tom is still there. So we've been talking about Tom Watson and Lee Westwood, but this is the third hole in a row Goggins had to well, the outright lead. Well, that was nowhere near. A really good opportunity. Still a three-way tie. Sink one behind. Moving over to the 14th hole now, which is the hardest hole on the course today. And up ahead on the green, this is Goosen for par. Five birdies today so far on 14, averaging 4.39. Well, Goose and playing with Furyk, neither of them have made a birdie today, so they're a very lacklustre pairing. There it is, Chris Wood in. That's the target, minus one to beat. There's four guys out there. Very capable of doing it. Maureen's down there. Slightly downhill or lie for Ross Fisher. 195, it's a three iron. Sandy end. That's becoming a forgotten figure of this final round, Ross Fisher. Still some holes left. Westwood now with the long iron. This is one of his strengths. Beautiful player. Wind straight in their face, 15 mile an hour up the hill. Maureen? Well, I think this is as little as a four iron, and he does flight the ball low, but this is a big shot from 195. The 
you did another couple. Just lifted on the wind. Not to his standard, his normal standard. One of the sweetest strikers of the ball. But he's got plenty of room, good angle at the flag. Strike looked all right. I think uh, they only had 178 to the front before Antonio go about 160. It's quite unusual. Tom Watson waits on the tee. Crucial for Tom to hit this fairway. If he doesn't hit the fairway, it's questionable whether he can reach in two. Cut of it's lying okay. Age has not read it yet. Goggin also with the driver. Australian the Open Championship with five holes to go. Mr. Sink sunk in the bushes. Helping his playing partner, Bryce Mulder search. But sink at the moment, two under par. Someone see go in there? No, nobody saw it down here at all. Which doesn't help. That's Billy Kretz. The American players <laughs> for American television, former player on tour. Westwood taking the putter. Saw Watson take the putter from here yesterday and it just bounced on him. Went left. Oh. Much like that. But Lee's made a much better fist of it than Tom did yesterday. That's a wonderful shot. Under the circumstances, it could almost be Scottish Andrew with a shot like that, couldn't it? Going, the English are on, a, on the verge of a historic win down at Lords today, and we may have an English winner. Watch this! Look at that, F nearly a three-quarter turn. Smack! The ball bounces. Normally, when they bounce like that, they lose pace and come up way short. But that was incredible. It carried ten yards, didn't it? Another deep cavernous bunker for Fisher, but plenty of green to work with. Do a great job. A couple of guys had no bunkers to rake the first two days. One guy had as many as about 16. He was very tired. Beautiful technique. One of just 62 bunkers. 65 at Tunbury. Far fewer than any other Open Championship course, but 
lot of players seem to be finding them now. Big putt for Lee Westwood. a great save by Westwood because these greens can tease you into seeing burrows that aren't there and this really does deserve a four this tap in from Westwood after that wonderful bunker shot that's right up and down there for Fisher So back down the fairway waits the final group of Tom Watson, Matt Goggin and Philip Parth. The great triumvirate. And Tom out with the hybrid club, 218 yards to the hole, 200 to the front. It's the longest 200 yards I've seen in a long time. Not the best of lies, he's hoping it's going to shoot out of this. It came out, came out strange. Just about up in Westwood. Country a little bit further back, actually. That's not going to be a putt from there. That's so unlucky with that tee shot, Watson. Just took a late right bounce. Aiming toward three. It's 180 ball. Definitely got plenty of wind. <laughs> Plays a couple yards up. Should that's, be a, that's the age of the carry. The carry is 69, so it's playing 71 carry. Oh, but we don't need to carry far, it. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought you meant that. Great. Okay. Phil, how far has he got? I make it 199 yards remaining, and it seems like the wind's as strong now as it has been all day. So that's 182 front. Probably more if you want to carry the bunker. This must be three iron. as well. Oh, he's off and running again. <coughs> well, here's Watson. He's trying to squeeze it out with a little bit of top spin. Get it chasing up there, but it just came out a little too low and not really with any real guts sort of just when you want a flyer you rarely get them it was a pretty good shot leaves him a relatively straightforward 35 40 yard pitch and he's a beautiful beautiful player of this type of shot second shot of Goosen on 15 Ooh, doesn't look like he can go at the flag no he's gone all the way to the back of the bunker now he'll be able to go at the flag one thing it, it, Back into the breeze a touch, but all downhill. What a bad break at this time of the championship. But you saw the ball did sit down in its own plug mark. So it's going to come out with nothing on it at all. Oh, beautifully played. That's fantastic. To keep that short of the hole is a wonderful shot. Slip back to one over par though with just three holes remaining. Goose is gone. And congratulations and perhaps commiserations for Chris Wood after that drop shot at the last, but a fine 67. Alone in fifth at the moment, one under par and two behind three players. And you don't fancy that all three of them are going to give up two shots.
Westwood, Watson and Goggin. Who will claim the Claret Jug? Stuart Sink, two under par. I don't think it was his ball that they were looking for. Perhaps playing part of Bryce Mulder. Tom, normally very good at this distance, just under 40 yards. Plenty of green to work with. Too good. Nipped it. Died in the second round. Crisp, just as Andrew said, almost too good. Ball checked up. How important was that up and down of Westwoods not so long ago? Shouldn't be too difficult this one for Matthew Coggin. See, it looks easy, everyone out there, doesn't it? It is if you use the right technique. Goes to drop just one at the 15th. Farewell. A double so close to the end of the Open Championship. Too much to take. No birdies at all today. Back to two over. He's playing with Furek, who's seven over. What a horror day for two guys that we thought were going to be right in the mix of it. At the end of the day, sink second shot to 16. Critical shot. Got to be left of the flag. Yeah, that's left. Oh. Come on down. Oh. Come on down. That's right. Oh, that lucky. A little roll. It rolled back onto the green quite easily, but still not too bad. Just kept it out of the drink. The main thing. Has he got another one of these in him, Jesse? I'd love to think so, Wayne. It was a well played pitch, as Andrew said, just almost too good. This is a little too long for comfort. Phil, what's it going to do? He could not leave himself an easier putt. It's just slightly uphill into the wind maybe inside right there's not really a lot in this one oh, what a good putt just hung high he thought he'd made it just one more gust of wind to slow it could have gone in this is playing partner now the Australian unheralded Little watched Matt Goggin, who leads the Open Championship. Westwood on 15, 215 yards this hole today. And Wayne, I don't think it really matters where the pin is today. It's a case of hitting and holding the screen. Westwood's got a seven iron. These players have waited a long time on this tee. It's just changing the rhythm of their game a little. Straight downwind, 184 front, the seven iron with the wind should be pitching six to seven yards on. Should be about right. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Only stick in there, son. This is yours. Oh. in there. Lee Westwood should have a better lie than that, but that pin right up the back, like a siren calling the players in down into the sand. Well, it's just coming up to 2.30 in the morning in Australia, but I get, guarantee you none of... Oh, none of the people in Tasmania are, are asleep. Westwood's in the lead on his own at three under. Matty, but he's having his troubles forward on 15. 
and also when Goggin westward in the sand, Chris Wood is being brought back into it. One under par in the clubhouse. How important was that bogey on the last for Wood? Maddie's just given this a bit of a, a run, hasn't he, Mark? Way too much for a run for my liking. But he's <laughs> up to the challenge, and he hung, hangs in there. Three players at two under. Westwood minus three, but in trouble at 15. A beautiful seven iron, but just running over the back. It just depends what sort of lie he has. If it's a good lie, it's a simple shot. Just lob it out into the wind, even though there's not much room to play with. If it's rolled towards the back of the bunker, it would be fiendishly difficult. Has Philip had a chance to have a look yet? Seekers run the birdie attempt on 16 way by. I don't know whether he knows what's happened behind him. Oh, everything's critical at this time, but Oof. back to one under for sink. Birdie bogey, birdie bogey. Well, it's white knuckle time. All of these holes birdieable and all of them bogeyable. Perfect finish to a major championship. What did he do here in 77? Tom birdied this. Now here we go, Westwood. Well, bunker play short game is not the finest part of his game, but it's lying fine. A fiddly one. Look at the blade laid wide open. This is not the time to try and be too delicate. He mustn't be too greedy. Nothing wrong with four or five feet past this hole. Sink of the knees, and that was the, the danger. He just didn't want to leave it in there, but in protecting that, he's left himself a 20-footer. said it before, Chris Wood sits in the clubhouse, one under par. Yes, there is the par five, 17th to come, but Tom Watson, Goggin dropping shots at the 14th. Lee Westwood in trouble at 15. See here, he doesn't appear so far to do anything odd. Well, he sort of hits past himself a bit. Sort of body stopped, hands prodded a bit. Of course, Watson and Goggin are standing back on the tee. They know they're, they're watching this intently. Know that Lee now has a good 20 feet for his par three. Still time to chat. Relaxed or at least giving the impression. Not paying any attention to Westwood on the green, he's pretending saying, not to pay any attention. He's saying, when you were three years old, Matty, I hold a putt from off the left of this green to take... Yeah, it is. Oh, you should have seen it. Nicholas was quick. Any of these players have the skill to lift this title, but now it's all about who has the belief. It's where are they all in the mental game, that challenge. If Westwood can rule this one in, that would be like a body blow to the two players on the tee behind. Even more important, 20-footers in his career. No. Shot gone. Opening for the others. Well, he's unlucky there. Hit a beautiful 7-iron, but you've got to be so careful on this type of course. He's done everything right, really, this week. Chris Wood is watching in the clubhouse. Don't drive home, Chris. Well, the name of this hole, Mark, is Carcani. Take care. 
especially today. I wondered what it meant. It's Thomas Aiken. Double 17, slip back to one under today. One total one over. This for a birdie, but no, no legs. Well, that'll be a great round of 69. One over total. Currently in a tie for seventh. A really good championship. Great prospect, this one. Would you say seven out of 14 top tens he's had? It is now. That's yeah. impressive, isn't it? Wow, that's impressive. After Fisher's eight on the fifth hole, we might have forgiven him had he pretended he'd had the phone call from his wife saying she was going into labour, but he's still battling here. Left or right or here, this would squeeze him back to one over. Not to be. Not to be today. was the late Payne Stewart when he beat Phil Mickelson in that US Open at Pinehurst as Mickelson was waiting for the call to come off the course with Amy expecting their first child he said the greater prize awaits you how Fisher would have loved the planet job but not today there's Chris Wood up at the clubhouse checking all these texts all some phone calls but not daring to leave still got the glove in his back pocket 15th hole today 215 yards downhill wind off the right got a, it's 184 yards to the front edge and that is the number you've got to carry it around the 180 that yellow ball there Thomas Leve a hole in one it's an inviting pin position but go beyond it into that bunker look at the black balls bogeys plus Because they've got the whole position 31 yards back, it does these give these guys a chance to get it close, but still you've got to land it just at the front edge and just hope it doesn't run off the back. But it is a whole position you can get close, even though there's still lots of trouble everywhere. Club selection made. Watson ready. Tied for the lead his playing partner Goggin and Lee Westwood. Goggin going with a 7 9, same club as Tom Watson. That's a cruel bunker. Position right behind the flag of the 15th. He's caught out a couple already. But there's certainly a lot more drama to unfold yet. Four holes to play, but all to play for. From where I am down the fairway, this looks like a three wood, is that right? And that means he's not taking on the right hand bunker as Fisher did. Yeah, right, Maureen, 285 it is three wood. out, Sam. Sorry, Maureen, yes, it is three wood is hitting. I think he's quite right because. Hit it in the bunker, you can't get up to, but you can get up from short of the trap. He's 
actually gone miles past the bunker on the right there. That's 336 to that bunker. Three hundred and three yards for Stuart Sink. He's got to get all of this one. Well, there'll be quite a few can come tomorrow morning. They'll talk and say what might have been, think about their play over the last four days or even the last couple of hours. There's only five players that can win it, I think. Westwood, Goggin, Watson, Wood in the clubhouse or Stuart Sink. It's a good scores today. Some very good scores under, particularly out the middle of the course where the conditions have been quite brisk. Oh no, can Mr. Goggin play? Good bunker shots. It depends where it is. It's not too bad. He wishes it was a little bit more on the upslope and it would have been an easy shot, but uh, back into the wind, it's not too difficult. Boy, he swung hard at that one. Created so much club head speed. That was amazing. Well, he did what Westwood did. But six, seven yards past the hole. It's a cruel bunker there. So deep. As you say, it took a full swing, gave it a real old top. I will leave him there. Get back to Tommy Watson. He hasn't held one of his monster putts today. Good time to do it, Tom. There's so much drama going on. It's looking Lee Westwood's way, then Tom Watson's way, and Matt Goggin. Who knows what could happen, but Tom Watson's left himself one of those distances that up until today he's been rolling in on a regular basis. Now's the time he wants one. This for the outright lead. Remember 1977, Peter? This green, it was the turning point, turning moment. He's got another chance. Yes, he held one. He was five or six yards off the green and rattled one in for a two. It's been a remarkable four days for Tom Watson. Couldn't happen again, could it? Well, you never know. It's quite He's saying he's 59. He's only 10 weeks off being 60. Or less than that. This for the lead. Two putts for the championship. Take it very gently. Important putt now for Matthew Goggin. He needs to hold this one to stay tied for the lead and only three holes left. So Tom's turn a little bit as it died and thought, I don't want to miss it on the low side and give it a rip through the borough for Matt Goggin. So he's dropped one. Watson leads with Lee Westwood, second to the 16th for Lee. Three quarter nine for Westwood from 139 yards, just trying to take a bit of spin off the ball. Dangerous yeah. pin, dangerous pin. Get down. A bit fiery, Ken. Well, he hit it in the water on day one. I think he thought, I'm not going in there at any cost, so shied away from it. Another awkward little chip he's left himself. And a long one, too. Goggin finishing off. Well, 
it's been a it's been a championship to remember for many many reasons and there's much drama to unfold yet I'm sure Watson finishing off the Watson still tied for the lead it's Lee Westwood as they move to the 16th hole Stuart Sink his third shot the par five is for an eagle asking a lot you never know works it high in the air he's on good effort to for a birdie, Stuart Sink will move to two under Sink rolls out and he'll tie for the lead with one hole left to play the story unfolding Chris Wood already in took five of the last ended up with a 67 Luke Donald a 67 some very good scoring today Jimenez 69 look at all those good scores there Ross Fisher though it's a sad moment he started 3-3 three, three, absolutely blistering form here he is Things started to go wrong. He's fought back well, but he's had about four crucial holes that cost him dear. And that's a good one. That's a magnificent shot. Three bogeys and an eight in his first nine, which added up to 40, all passed since then. I'll play this game one day. Just you wait and see. chip for Lee Westwood water just 10 yards past the hole and Westwood short game facing the severest of tests now very easy to leave this one short very well called Maureen a tricky one for him, always difficult on that little fluffy rough, you never know the contact you're going to get on the chip and obviously with the water 10 yards behind you're not going to be too aggressive. Well this to tie the lead, downhill, a little bit of movement, Stuart Sink, can he do it? This for a birdie four. Just maybe a little bit longer than the putt that Jack Nicholas missed here all those years ago when he had watched that. <laughs> Two short cuts in a row for Sink. He stays one under, but he's one behind. One hole to go. He can get a three at the last. So many permutations. He's reasonably satisfied with that. Just have a nice firm bounce down this fairway. Tom Watson's played the last three holes this week so far, 16, 17, 18, five under par. They've been his uh, get-out-of-jail-free card. Extraordinary. And I've had a, a 
correspondence from Sandy Rutherford, dear friend of mine from St Andrews, who said this championship might never have taken place years ago if a friend of his, McCall Hodge, hadn't bought the old farm where the airport was. Just watching Ola. That's the ground from Jack. JD 72, Richard Jackson 70. Yes, the old airport and the farm was up for sale, and uh, McCall Hodge bought it the whole lot for 8,000 quid. And the first open here, they used it for car parking, so without that, maybe no open. Come on, Fisher. Right now, lives a bit, and he had. Oh. Boy, oh boy, what a start to he had. 3 3. Well, what a difficult tee shot this is on a normal day, but right to left the wind is bunkers all the way down the left. Almost got to start the tee shot over the flanks of stewards down the right hand side and let the wind do its best to knock it back to the fairway. No need to hit the driver, just a long iron, looking to get it down there, 250 yards or so. Yes, he likes that, started it well, right, the big draw on it. Excellent tee shot, just running through the fairway. A little bit harder to get the spin from there. The one shot behind sink, 5-5 five, five at 16-17. Will he rue that later? Matthew Goggin just one shot behind, 176 yards remaining, going with a seven iron. Wind strong off the right. And no members bouncing. He too shying away from the wee burn that runs across the front and down the right of the green. 151 yards at the front for Tom Watson. You've got to carry the ball on that line an extra seven yards to get on the flat, so it's really 158, and then it's about eight more paces to the flag. If you leak to the right, you get gathered into the water. Here is the Watson's down here. The second shot's going to come across the old water there. Just out of the light rough, though, Phil. It, you know, that makes a big difference. If it's on the fairway, we would know exactly how it's going to react once it hits the green, but from here, not too sure. Phil, do you think he knows he's leading now? I don't... Th I'm not sure. He was walking down and probably couldn't see Lee Westwood uh, missing that putt. He was a long way down the fairway when that happened middle of the green would be great here but you're never really sure if it might just jump all depends on where it lands in the bounce Stepping back there as he heard the applause for that shot, thudding into the 16th green. He's got to gather himself and put out of the, his mind now that he's taken three from the edge at the last two greens. It's one of the few times he's missed the fairway, but I think he may have been lucky. Maybe far enough, it looks quite wispy there. Maybe okay. Two and a half holes to go. Tom Watson still leads the open. Fifty nine years of age, kid.
so it's Friday, 16th. An impossible putt. And it just about started to turn and you knew it was in. Yesterday, up to this point, it was all a bit of a jolly jape. Tom playing in the air to the whoopsie. And he's on the 16th screen again with a similar length putt. Goosen for Eagle, just to get back to level. Eagle did it yesterday. Can he do it again? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Well, Goosen back to level par. Two behind, one to play. Wonderful Eagle. What Lee Westwood or Tom Watson would pay for that, let me tell you. What would Goosen give for a 3 and 15? Got in. Just give me a stab and hope for the best steady interactive shot. Rather frightening shot from there. That thick rough. Thick rough. I think he'll be running again to mark that one. It'll take much more if it had trickled into the old natural spring water. Now Thomas. Tom Watson has holed two monsters on the 16th the last two days. Of course, if this one goes in, he's got a two-shot lead. Perhaps he's hit all week. Well, Peter Chris Wood sitting in the clubhouse now. I bet he's getting a bit more excited now. Tom doesn't hold that one. He'll be tied for the lead. There he is, going to the range. Or the bar, one or the other. I think he's going to the range. Hundred and ninety one yards to go. Nine iron for Stuart Sink. Straight downwind here. You're right. So you work on the first gather a little bit from there. That's a superb play shot. Another player's going over the back of the screen. A quick fire with a cutting surface wind behind him. Goes to two under. Bogey, bogey, bogey for Goggin. Sadly. You see it, Tom Watson, one ahead. The 16th green bee has a toughie. This is a crucial putt for Tom Watson. It couldn't have been a worse length for him. Oh, what this would give him if he could knock it in. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant for Watson. And he's one ahead, two to play. On 5-17th. My God, can it really happen?
course, the Stuart Singers had a very good championship. Nice made it alongside Sink. Not so good today. In fact, seven over today. So part of the last for 77. Sink with the putt for 69 to take the lead in the club house. Westwood has been fortunate with this lie. He really has. He's got a five iron in his hand, 246 to go. He needs a lot of skill and a good bit of luck to thread this between the bunkers. And he's certainly eyeing his quarry up. Is he going to get the right bounce? Oh, I'm telling you, just watch this. This is going to be absolutely cushioned. Oh, 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 oh. Great shot from Lee Westwood. Fantastic. We get very close to the left front bunker. Scored to the line. Now here's a chance for an eagle. Now Stuart Sink. Just missed a couple of short ones on 16 and 17. So I'd have to say this is the most crucial part of his career so far. This to tie for the lead. set a target but just think just spare a thought for a moment for Tom Watson he needs two fours to probably win the open championship yeah. possible again unless Lee Westwood comes up with a bit of magic right it's all coming down to biting your fingernails you know, the possibility of him winning the champ is quite remarkable Slope to the front left of the green. Oh, Lee approaching the green, getting a warm round of applause. It's a time to get a lot of sh cries. Come on, Lee. Not going to be for Chris Wood this year, but another fantastic Open Championship. Only a tie for third. I've just been told, I think, that uh, <laughs> Stuart Sink's done him. Two opens, fifth, and well, it looks like a top three. Who knows? But terrific effort, Chris Wood. So it looks Stuart Sink in the clubhouse with a 69 after that splendid birdie at the 18th. Tom Watson two under, par five to come, the easiest hole on the course. And, and Lee West with an eagle chance at 17. Was in. Uh what is it? Only 40 odd days' time, Tom Watson will be 60, and that's the age that passed open championship. They're exempt until they're 60. Now, this was, uh, they used to be 65, but then they, the RNA wanted to see more places available for the starting field. The old champions used to come and play with, in all, in all truth, not much opportunity or chance of winning another championship. But um, 
Man, they're nice to see the past champions, and the committee will also consider all exemptions in, in the months after the championships. There's much for them to ponder. They're very progressive, the RNA and the USGA. They're very forward thinking. A lot of people think they're fuddy that is, they're far from it. They will make, I'm sure, the right decisions about the future of this championship. What a bell to this one's been. I have to say, the course has been presented by George Brown and his green staff here. Absolutely stunning. I think the pin positions have been a, a real test for the players. Grant Moy has pl planted those out each day. It's been a splendid test. And who's going to win? Good cut there from Fisher. I think. Uh, Watson won with 12 under, Norman won with even par, and Price won with 12 under. And looks like this is going to be two or three under. I think the course has always been set up to very well. Goosen at the final hole, this needs to go in. Oh. It's a very good shot. And he's going to come up, whatever happens, he's going to come up a little short and he'll read that five at the par three fifteenth. Good tee shot, just went through into the bunker, took five. Here it is, practice for hours and hours as a lad. If he holds this, he's red hot favourite to win the Open. Eagle chance. had to wait nearly every hole uh, he was a very brisk player he's just looking at that just ran off the fairway good line and if you can hit it straight get a bit of run chase it up onto the green to walk back now about 80 yards to the 18th tee tied for the open championship with one hole to go quite a few long walks back from green to tee here oh, completely thought that was in i did too fisher tapped his in So it seems as though Tom Watson has to birdie this 17th to regain the outright lead. And he's out with a club that he's hit so well so far this week. He's with hybrid, 267 yards downwind off the right. Straight hit will do it. Just through the back of the green, he really gave this up. Amazing that he swings the club back so far and so freely. Sweeps, look at that head still, right through. Almost identical to 30, 40 years ago. Remarkable. We'd have to say his favorite now, Wayne. Well, he's, he's making everyone a believer, isn't he? He certainly, well, he didn't have to convince me. Well, you've got that fellow um, you know, riding in the Tour de France, Lance Armstrong. He, you know, it's a remarkable fellow also. He thinks oh, he gives up cycling for a couple of years. I think I'll have a bike ride around France again. I might, I might win it. You know, quite an extraordinary man. Well, 
the drama is unfolding all around us. The ideal tee shot here on 18 is down the outer side of the elbow on his right to left dog leg. Anything between 260, 280 is fine, gives you good look in at the green. Danger is one bunker, 265 on the left hand side. straight down to the center, which is... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Woo, woo. Oh, no. Well, the only good thing is he may be just in the bunker and able to hit it from there with a five, six iron or whatever, get it up by the green. Stuart Sinko is in the clubhouse, nice and tidily, two under, um, waiting. Open, pray. We're just sort of in that, um, sort of in that in between. Fisher. Not far away from being able to go home and witness the birth of his first child. Been a long day for him. And what would have been about that quadruple bogey on the fifth? is all lie dependent and if it's sitting up nicely it's relatively easy but if it's nestled and he's having a good look at it it's quite a tricky little shot sprinkler not in his way but downhill ball kicking to the left he's chipped in on the 17th before in a major championship although the rough was a little bit longer to beat jack nicholas in that pebble no i'm not sure westwood knows his ball in that left hand bunker The goose, Retief Goosen at the 18th for a birdie, a round of 71 if he can nail it. And he can't. So a terrific tournament. 72 blows today. Finishes on even time. 280. 67, 70, 71, 72. An excellent open performance. Matthew Goggins been having a little bit of trouble up this 17th, but has this one for a birdie. Come on. Great putt, Matty. There's a new like it. Will be a great effort, though. He hung in for a long time today. He will break through soon. Hope he takes his form back to America. He's stretching his neck out here, Maureen, as if he's not sure if it's where it is, and I think he's just going to register it. Do you know it's in the sand? He does now, he can, yes. And, oh. you know, these Lynx bunkers just gather the ball in from seemingly 10 yards away from the sand. It's got quite a fierce lip from there, and he's a long way back. Tom Watson now for an eagle using the putter. Goes in, he's got a two shot lead, one to go. Well, it was a, I thought a strange choice of club, but it worked out well, Ken. It's a 34. Fantastic effort. Just probably the percentage shot. Well, he played it magnificently. 59, I just can't believe what I'm watching. <laughs> was obviously sitting well. The old days, he just would have popped the sand wedge out, put her up there close, but Matty Goggin for his part. Three over today, even par for the championship. Have a lot of reflecting to do after this round. 
but a good week and a nice check to go home. I mean, they're professional players. They've got to earn money, and uh, we're doing the world of good. And, and now this to lead the Open Championship with one hole to go. He's left. Westwood really doesn't have a shot here to attack the green. This tee shot of his has turned this into a three-shotter. He's got to pour all his powers of concentration into somehow manufacturing a four down this closing hole. He looks like he's taking a, a fairly brave line and shot. Oh, it, it looks like he's got a fair bit of loft. I don't think he's being silly. I mean, if he gets it out with a 9-iron or a wedge, 100, 110, whatever yards down the fairway, He's got another one probably up to the green and, and a, a putt for a four. If he hits the bank and stays in the bunker, it's finished. It's over. But hitting the fairway is critical, so he can really nip and pinch his little pitch. He'll be aiming at the giant scoreboard there, the right-hand side of the green, one either side. Something. An amazing shot. That was, I mean, uh, Maureen was saying, you know, be careful and make it a, a full shot up, but I mean, that was a fizzer. And he, how he did that, I really don't know. This is sheer genius. We see it's an eight iron, and look how tall the lip is. He's absolutely on the limit. He strikes it. Look at that. Just tiptoes over the lip. You won't see a better shot. Full blast. Brave, brave, brave. But then we are playing for the open. Tom Watson thinks he's done. He thinks he must have hold it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably does. Uh, Leslie's wife, Claire, with the youngins, the boys and girls from Charterhouse and Gigglesworth, who uh, look after the giant scorebooks, all rushing about and getting there. The congratulatory note ready for whoever becomes the champion. All things going on, buzzing and huzzing. Watson back on the tee. Drama to the very end. Yes, I was about to say that Lee's, uh, he's paid the price for every mistake he's paid this, uh, made this week, but not that it, that was a mistake off the tee. And it looked like he was going to have to pitch it out, but that was sensational. Tom's left the driver in the bag. He's got his little, um, not a three wood, the old, whatever they call him. You may have your own pet name for one of these, the old gentleman's persuader. He's going to try and knock it down the right-hand side, leave him a good line into the green. Probably waiting to see what Westwood does. Westwood's a mile away, but there'll be uh, good applause. He can't wait too long, of course. He can always say that there's a little movement in the crowd or whatever. I, this is a huge, but this is much longer than the one that Jack Nicholas hold. 
sure Lee will give it his full attention. He's getting on for cricket pitch length, this one. You had, you had to throw the cricket in, didn't you? Well, it's a good measure for most people. Tom's going to cut loose at that green shed down there on stilts down the right there. And that's the sort of line for Tom. Maybe a bit right of that. got a great angle there he's got about 175 170 yards to the front of the green top well this is a massive putt for Westwood you can see the length of it this for a three this would take him to three under par Watson is a three under so if he holds this and Watson gets a four it's a playoff but first he's got to hold this So got to remember Stuart sinks in at two under par. That really well, well it was a huge long putt. I mean, it was very difficult to get the distance perfect, but that was a bit a bit over brisk. John might not know it, but it probably does now that the par at the last and he's his open champion for the sixth time. Well, miracles do happen. Fairy tales do come true. Well, they all say records are meant to be beaten, and the oldest champion of the Varden Championship, uh, was it Harry Varden, and the oldest of the PJ, and the 48 year old Julius Boris. So, um, here's Ross Fisher, who's had a very unhappy, unhappy day, but still plodding on. Championship wins is about 11 years will come to blow that out of the water too. In she goes. <laughs> 75. All the damage done really in the first half a dozen holes. Dirty big eight knocked him back. He played some good stuff, showed good composure. An expensive lesson. I Watson. Well, some might argue if he wins it, this is the greatest sporting achievement by anybody, I would say. Well, <laughs> he's arguably betting it. But Watson, uh, Watson coming down, waiting westward. Does he? Oh. Four though, Ken. That's that's what uh, knocked him back. Yes, you don't normally come home in 38 no. and win a major championship. No. Second shot, Goggin. Now this will be a good range finder for Watson too. Sweep back, sweep under the green. Well, Ken, we've seen Tom Watson play some beautiful irons into the final game, and he's won his previous five championships. 
Can he do it just one more time? Funnily enough, the pin is almost in exactly the same spot as it was in 1977. Come with the moment, come with the man. One good straight one, Tom. Stuart Sink is now in second place, the three putts from Westwood put him down into third place. What drama. That was, that was just a pure iron shot too, he would have loved it in the air. But wait till you hear this. up the 18th fair where there was Tom was police constable Jim McGarry 30 years service and he's uh, this is his last commission at Strathclyde police I was talking to him earlier and only one arrest here this week that tells you something about the funny old game of golf so many happy people so many wonderful moments one arrest Jim McGarry 30 years in the service wishing well he's looked after Tom well all day today his wife Hillary She'll be churning inside. Well, Tom was looking down on that somewhat quizzically. He's got the old putter out again. It's obviously just nestled down and doesn't fancy getting a wedge on the back of it. Well, 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 there it is. Isn't, that was very unlucky. If he gets down in two, he's the champion. If he takes three, he and Stuart Sink will go and play and have a playoff. Four hole playoff. Five, six, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, oh, oh. oh yo, 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 down in two. He could do it. Your old man could do it. I'm with her though. I'm getting very nervous. like this. This is truly remarkable. For Watson with a 10-footer or ten footer or so to win the championship is sixth. And it would be one of the truly most remarkable achievements in the world of sport. Would it be a good thing? Well, it would be a, a wonderful thing for his skill and nerve and wonderful love of the game of golf. What about the young fellows he's beaten? Yeah, if Tom does manage to hold that one and win this, it's, it will certainly the, be the greatest sporting achievement that I've ever seen in my lifetime, and maybe of all time. Now, Matty Goggin. 
Just two putts for him for a round of 73. Even par for the championship. And wonder what could have been. He's been witness to something special today, though. See this length in a five foot again. Well, this is something we never expected. Tom Watson, one of the great champions of all time, with a putt to win his sixth Open Championship. Forty odd days off his 60th birthday. Playoff it is. Four hole player, four, five, six, seventeen, eighty. Very unlucky going through the green with that wonderful second shot. Still more to come. For the first time in the week, there was a moment where we thought actually didn't believe it themselves. has been made telling the huge galleries here that the playoff will, will take place in a few moments. Fifth, sixth, seventeenth and eighteenth holes. Should they tie, it'll be sudden death over the eighteenth hole only. So they'll have their scores up for the, over the four holes. And if we have a winner then, so be it. Uh, that was very, that was very disappointing. That he fought so magnificently, and to hit that beautiful shot into the 18th for it just to go through the back of the green, end up where it did, was just a horrid place to be. But, but for Stuart Singh, what a different story for him. 12, 14, for this was the putt he held to get him to two under. Four hole player for his, and he had up the score for all four holes of his. That's a great way to have a player who's got sudden death. He has scored in the first hole he played. So it's a Watson sink playoff. Well, well there'll be two men, I suspect, who will be absolutely kicking themselves. Chris Wood, who made a bogey at the last, went really chances were pretty good he was going to make a par and I think he felt at the time that probably two under had a great chance of playing off anyway you could see his disappointment and Lee Westwood trying to force the birdie at the last thing knowing that uh, Watson was three under racing it by and making a bogey as well so it's playoff time some extraordinary records that, that Tom Watson is on the verge of matching or breaking the record holder is Harry Varden with six wins in the Open Championship between 1896 and 1914. Five time winners include James Braid from 1901 to 1910, J.H. Taylor, the third of the Great Triumvirate from 1894 until 1913, and Peter Thompson between 1954 and 1965. And of course, Tom Watson is the fourth of those men on five under. J.H. Taylor is the owner of the biggest gap between first and last wins and that was 19 years for Tom Watson it would be 34 years should he pull it off as Wayne Grady mentioned the biggest gap between wins belonged to Sir Henry Cotton between 1937 and 1948 a gap of 11 years for Tom Watson it would be 27 years should he go on and win the oldest winner 
going right back to the old days as Tom Morris senior back in 1867 he was 46 years and 99 days when he won and Roberto Di Vincenzo the great Argentine player in 1967 was 44 years and 93 days so Watson would smash those the winner at very nearly 60 and there have been three champions who've won in three decades Harry Varden the 1890s 1903 and then 1911 J.H. Taylor 1894, 1900, and 1913. And Gary Player, who won in 1959, 1968, and 1974. Watson would have done it in the 1970s, the 1980s, and the 2000s. Just a quick run down the leaderboard here. Tong Chai Jai a very good open for him. The 72, finishing at two over. And El Cabrera. James Kingston, a 72, finishing at four over. Richard Sterney, a 70 today, good round. Finish at five over. Brandon Grace, a little disappointed today with 75 at seven over. McElroy, 71, came back well today. Good round from Darren Clark. Finish at nine over. Appleby, 73, 12 over, tying for 65th. Marco Mira, a good week for the former champion. Daniel Gaunt, who fought back so well in the second round with a 67. 82 today, Tell and Charlie, of the 73 players that made the cut. Three Englishmen behind the top two Americans, then a South Africa and an Australian. But Ernie Earls again so close. He really had his chances today. We've seen it so often from Ernie where he comes through in the final round and he looked to be almost like the old Ernie. Gave it a really good run. But unfortunately, dropping shots in the 16th and at the 18th to finish him one over. Tom Watson. First one at Carnoustie back in 1975 in its very first Open Championship when he beat Jack Newton in an 18-hole playoff. Then, of course, the Jewel in the Sun at Turnbury in 1977 when he beat Jack Nicklaus by one shot. One again at Muirfield in 1980 when he beat Lee Trevino and Ben Crenshaw by four shots. Jack Nicklaus was just behind as well. Two years later at Troon in 1982 when he beat Peter Oosterhaus and Nick Price by one shot of his five wins came at Birkdale in 1983 when he beat Andy Bean and Hale Irwin by one shot. Well, they've always said about Turnbury in its three Open Championships that it's produced a win from the best player in the world at that time. You certainly wouldn't be able to say that about Tom Watson right now. Clearly he's not the best player in the world, but arguably one of the very best and certainly one of the greatest to have played Lynx golf, to have won Lynx championships. It's going to be a really interesting playoff. Playoffs are always exciting anyway, but they're playing off some pretty interesting holes. The fifth has been the hardest hole all week. The sixth is a long par three. Then you've got the 17th, which is the easiest hole on the course, the reachable par five, where certainly an eagle is possible. And then we've seen happens on the 18th where there have been just half a dozen birdies today and remember it's still stroke play for four holes and then it becomes sudden death so they have uh, a little way to go to run them out to the fifth tee Ground staff make sure that everything is absolutely spot on. So they're picking up confetti. All credit too to Stuart Sink, making a, a really 
tremendous putt on the 18th. It didn't look for a moment as though it was going to quite make it, but it did in the end just dribble in. Good save. 36 now in his golfing prime. Best result in the open was tied sixth at Carnoustie two years ago. Missed the cut at Birkdale last year. Playing in his 12th open. So the five-time winner on the PGA Tour. Since the 2008 Travelers Championship, it's a product of Georgia Tech, it's from Duluth, in Georgia. And in college, he was a three time. NCAA Division One All-American in 1993, 94, and 95. Interestingly, he was a husband and father by the time he graduated. I think was an extremely promising performer in his early days. In fact, he was the second rookie to exceed $800,000 in earnings. David Duval was the first. This would certainly be the real highlight of his career thus far. He, he was quite hyped up in the early stages of his career. They all said that a lot of people said that he was going to be the next big thing. It hasn't quite happened so far, but we've seen it happen with plenty of players that they only really come into their prime in their mid to late 30s. And one thinks of people like Marco Mira winning two majors in his 40s. Spectators, of course, had come all the way in to be round the 18th to see the climax, which I guess by the time they got there, most people thought that Tom would manage a par down the last, having made that tremendous birdie in the 17th. So unlucky with his approach, they just tickled over the back and into the slightly thicker grass. In business, he thought his day was done. <laughs> well, it's uh, what, 25 to 7 local time, so they've got plenty of time yet. They've got oh, at least another three hours of light, at least. It's going to take that long. domestic point of view I suppose it's a little disappointing that after two years of having a, a local winner in the shape of Padre Harrington it's going to go back across the Atlantic and I wonder what thoughts are going through his mind is he saying Tom you silly old boy you've blown it isn't that just magnificent with Ailsa Craig in the distance man It's a links that he's owned in many regards. He's played here so many times. He won the Jewel in the Sun. He's won the British Seniors here. And there's a danger here that they're going to be playing in a slightly flat atmosphere. How many of the crowd are going to get back out there, I wonder? Let's get back to the commentators. Have a look at the fifth hole. 474 yards as we sweep over the tee. Bunkers left and right, very strategically positioned. Two on the left and two on the right. Ideally, want to favour the right side of the, 
of the fairway, then it, the hole turns to the left. A very demanding second shot. This is the hole Ross Fisher took his eight on earlier in the day. Today's play, for the week, it's been the hardest hole. Today it's 4.38, the second most difficult. So fours are good. <coughs> Green, the flag wasn't losing much, Peter, but it's certainly still blowing across the hole there. Yes, I don't know how far Sink is away and whether, he, whether this is a little bit of an old delaying tactic. I don't know where his buggy is. I don't know what he's up to. And he's keeping the old boy waiting. It's just a little move. I don't know. Certainly not showing any great sign of urgency. Sink's playoff record is he's played in three, won one and lost two. Tom Watson's playoff record, he's played in 10, won two and lost eight. Really? So not very convincing. Oh, has a terrible bearing on each player, all of it 50 50. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. May I welcome you to the playoff to decide the winner of the 138th Open Championship. The holes will be 5, 6, 17, and 18. Thereafter, sudden death will be played over the 18th until the winner emerges. Now for the draw. <coughs> well, sure. Have to decide the order. There it is. You have to retail first. Very good. Okay. Tom has the honor. On the D from USA, Tom Watson. Tom's gone. Four, five, four, four. On this fifth hole, and Stewart sink four five five five. Wind directly off the left, bunkers all the way down the left. That's a cracking tee shot. for sink. Well, we saw what happened when Ross Fisher and Lee Westwood took irons off this tee. They both blazed them away up to the right, and it cost Ross a Fisher an eight. Bunker on the right down there at 288 yards. So about 280 from where the markers are. We need to keep up short of that. Wind hard off the left. Shots are usually in this kind of vicinity around those bunkers there. There's still a fair wind blowing as well across the fairway. Tom looks a little chilly, doesn't he? he looks like he's keeping his hands warm anyway. Yeah. Putting on a brisk pace. Waited a lot today. He had a cracking tee shot. It was interesting watching him uh, line up there. It looked as if he just turned the toe of the driver in a little bit just to help uh, him keep the ball down and sort of hugging into the wind. Look at the length of backswing there. That really is a wonderful turn. This was a beautifully struck tee shot. Swept it off the top of the tee, extended the right arm through. Beautiful. Clipped it away, sweet as a nut. Absolute beauty. 
be interesting to see, Peter, can that Tom plans on retiring next year after St Andrews? Does what he? Yeah. Yeah. At 60 years old, I wonder what, wonder what would happen if he was to win. He might retire tonight. I think we'll see him down at Sunnydale there. For those of you in that neck of the woods, Sunnydale, about 30 miles west of London, 10 miles or so from Heathrow, going west, he'll be there with a lot of the great names from the past playing in the British Seniors, or the Senior British Open, on a delightful golf course where you, you regular golfers would have seen televised golf in there many times, and many of you must have played it. Two courses, the old and the new. Lovely old club, proper golf club, Sunnydale. There are the tee shots. Good advantage for Tom Watson, 191 yards of it. It's a hole you're just trying to make a four on. Pin at the back of the green does give you some kind of landing area. There's some quite big slopes on this side of the green that kick the ball in. Sinks quite a long way back. He's got quite a formidable shot into this game. Maureen's with Sink. What sort of length of shot has he got here, Maureen? He's got 217 to go, Peter. And we're down in this sunken fairway between the dunes. It's fairly sheltered. And Sink is a high ball hitter. And when this gets up over the height of the dunes, this should move quite a bit from left to right. He's got a four iron in his hand. If he starts this at the flag, he will be taking on the rough and the cluster of three bunkers. But there's quite a bit of green to the right-hand side of the flag. Saw a good view there of the flag just flickering, flickering and fluttering over the top of that hill. Sink second. Hey there. Drifting, drifting, drifting. And it's going to be in the bunker. And that could be horrid as it rolls away from the bank. And advantage Watson. Is it in the shadow? Can you see it there, Wayne? I can't see it. Yeah, it's just in the shadow, not quite. The stance shouldn't be too bad. Now, Watson hit a beautiful four iron in here this morning, left of the flag. And he's going one less today. This is a five iron. Chris Pitt. Oh, under club needed a four. Put it in that front bunker, I fancy. Serious misjudgment there from Watson. Yes, he only had four yards shorter this afternoon than he did this morning. Four iron got him to pin high. Oh, this will test him. A couple of long bunker shots. Yes, I'm surprised. Tom may be concerned that he's been through. The, the reason he's not champion at this moment is he's played some two, certainly two, maybe three beautiful iron shots into greens. And he went too far and couldn't get down in two from the position he ended up in. That's the only reason I can think he had. He's 20 yards short. Uh, all depends on the line. A slight downside of this five-hole playoff is the fact most of the crowd wait on the 18th, sorry, th four-hole playoff. But the, the, the sort of get a few stragglers out here, but you haven't got the full entire yeah, It's a bit, a bit empty. Yeah. Push the after the 18th and all the rural. I think there's a few up on the hills overlooking the green and around the sixth tee. I don't know, there's more people on the fairway there than ever came and watched me. Tom's on the upslope, so he's close to the lip, but uh, because he's on the upslope, he'll be able to get it up plenty of time, but it's just uh, trying to control the distance, never easy, around about 20 yards shot. I think he'll do well. A, you've got to give it a big beat to get that back to the pin. They've got the bunkers set up very nicely here, though, Ken. You can see that that ball is on slight, a uh, slight upslope, which helps get the ball in the air quickly. They could have been very nasty, Peter, and just made that a little flatter, which would make it almost impossible to get it up. Yeah. 
Now, Tom's going over there to look at something. He's either going to look at his lie or asking whose shot it is. Well, Stuart Sink's ball barely tiptoed into the bunker. And there's just about room for him to insert himself between the ball and the edge. It probably mean that he's standing quite a bit above the golf ball, which doesn't make this task any easier. Oh, yeah, we can. Being a big, tall man makes it even is like a feeding giraffe. Sink first. This is about 30 yards all told. He looks as if he's going to try and pitch this quite well up the green. Nice shot there from Sink. That flag distance away, about eight feet. Now Watson. Has to get it up very quickly. Don't know what happened there. That was very strange. That's an extremely steep lip on that bunker. You know, it's a really vertical one, like the Rotol bunker at St Andrews. Those two at the front. And it used to be one bunker there, I seem to remember, and they've made them into these two rather nasty. Did it hit the bank? I don't think so. I think it was, he just tried to flip it up. May have clipped the bank as it's coming up. I don't think so. Now Tom's got to gather up his thoughts here. They both played three. But obviously the advantage is with Stuart Sink. Now let's see if we can see the path of this ball. Certainly took a big swing. Did he draw the club too far across the ball, did he? He just clawed over the top, but yeah. just didn't get enough woof behind I it, I don't think he? it was possible. I think if he had got enough woof behind it, he wouldn't have got it up quick enough. Well, now, two putts at worst. Yeah, this is not a fast putt and it's going to break from the left. The way he's putted today, you certainly want him to get it with inside a couple of feet. You don't want him to leave himself one of those from around about four feet, so important to get this one close. If you have an early error, it's quite difficult to make a comeback. Yeah. You've got to keep the pressure on your opponent. But that's a five. Disappointing after a very good tee shot. The well struck second, but took the wrong club. At least he left himself a no stress putt for his bogey. It was a two putt. He'll be disappointed there, as you said, Peter. The wrong club now. Sink. Eight feet to take a one shot lead. He's directly below the hole. It's strange to see Sink back with the short putter. He used the belly one for many, many years. One ahead. They go to the next playoff hole, which is the sixth, the long par three. That was a bit of good fortune for Sink there after pushing his shot into the bunker. Watson was the favourite, but he couldn't take advantage. Well, let's hope this isn't going to be an anti climax. Sink 
we've definitely played this hole a little bit over the four days. The sixth on, today's team today has been 227 yards. Have a look at the six. Over the tee we fly. Wind quite hard from left to right, as I say, playing 227 today. But with the wind off the left and the pin in the left corner, very awkward to get out. Anything pitching short runs off the front of the green. Pin high right is the shot. You've got to carry it on far enough onto the putting surface. Saw Watson hit a beautiful shot in here this, or this afternoon, about 15 foot behind the hole, but failed to convert. I don't remember just what Stewart did, but he, he made a three. They both made three this afternoon. Sinks actually one under for this hole. Two, three, three, three. Throughout the championship. Well, the nervous energy is just tangible out here. What a climax to what a day. Sinks got a two iron here. Remember this par three, if you don't carry it at least halfway up the green, you're in grave danger of running 40 yards back off the front edge. the left Maureen that's on the back shelf a touch of good fortune is the wind straight across left or is it a bit against it's actually turning it more into now Peter now Watson to be he may be getting a little weary that shoved it may not be lying too bad if he's gone off the hill and down onto the spectator paddled area he'll be about 15 feet below the level of the green playing second shot will be blind straight back up into the the wind Have a look at the swing. Don't think we'll pick up too much from it. I think maybe just a little bit of tiredness. Just wanted to get it up in the air. It landed about 215 on the front edge and let the ball release to the back, but lost it on the wind. It took off in the right direction, didn't it? When it got in the air, it sort of swung away to the right down there not a spectators everyone will have to move off the hill and they'll have to move back and give the great man a bit more room it's a very lonely place at the moment got to come over, the, over these spectators Big high one back into the wind. <laughs> Stuart Sink, American with only a few wins on the verge of his first major championship. He's played in the Ryder Cup a couple of times. Made a lot of money, but not won as many as many times as people would think he has no or should and the interesting thing the quest for major championships when you think of the, the great players that have never won one and some that have won one or maybe two and this fellow Stuart Sink from coming with no real pedigree could well be the champion in another 45 minutes hours time Very 
steep hill. Now look down where the flag is. See, the flag is quite a long way. It's almost, almost in the middle of the green. If he's got a decent line, he gets the distance right. He should, a sort of old parachute shot. If he lands it up anywhere near the hole, it shouldn't gallop, gallop away. I wouldn't be surprised to see it lying very nicely over there. The gallery have had enough time to tear it up. Phil, what's a, what lie has he got? Well, yeah, I'm going to go right over you guys. There's a little okay. bit of grass between the clubs. You may have come back a little He's bit. He's hitting bit. directly into the sun, which is not going to help. Needs to knock it about 15, 20 yards over the top of the bank. There looked to be a bit of a clump behind the ball. So to get a line and just line up, give it a, give it a hit and hope for the best. see where the ball went was Justin Leonard former Open champion 1997 at Troon out watching Well, it must be very strange for Stuart Sink out here. He's very well aware of the, the crowd favourite. Doing his best to wrap himself in a cocoon of concentration. Now, this putt is quite challenging. It's straight down the hill. It's downwind. It certainly will have speeded up throughout the day as the winds have dried out these greens. Interesting that we've got two men contesting this playoff, both of them having had a history with the putter. Not always been on the best of terms, so the nerves will be jangling for both of them just at the moment. Sink played with Harrington on the last day at Carnoustie, said he learned a great deal from that experience. The greens just dried out a little bit. This is the one that did change, seem to change colour a little bit throughout the day. A lot faster than most. And it's still a lot of work left to do there. But his putt, how difficult that putt is, will depend on what Tom does with his. Tom Watson's been a little bit hesitant on this type of putt so far today. Mind you, no surprise, and it's downhill, downwind, and off the left-hand side. If you give it a go, it's easy to go four or five feet by. He's due one. A little down the slope, this one. A bit of movement from left to right. I'm sure he didn't have a very similar putt this morning. Time to be bold, Tom, otherwise you're running out of time. Hit it. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Well done, well done. Tremendous up and down from an awful spot down the right. Fantastic. I'm totally excited. Well, he's putting a wriggle on, Peter. That really was. Tremendous putt. Now, well, Sink's got a bit to think about here. Wind across. Very easy for the putt to slide to the right. Well, 
Well, there won't be as much movement in this one of Sinks as there was in Watson's, but movement there is. It will come from his left to right. And with that left to right wind that Peter mentioned, not a putt I think he'll relish. Changing putters means one thing. Well done. A little bit nervy, but brushes it in. Move now over to the 17th tee, the par five. They've got a little bit of a journey. I'll take the buggies. Stuart Sink, even par. Tom Watson plus one after the opening two holes of the playoff. So Watson one behind, par five to come. Seventeenth hole is a 559 par yard par five. It's been the second easiest hole on the golf course behind the seventh, the other par five. There's only two par fives here at Turnbury. It's average 4.57. 33 birdies today. Four eagles. There's a bunker off the tee that the players will have to play short of at 335. How's Watson played this hole? He's played it pretty well, hasn't he? Tom's four, all fours, four, 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 and sink four, 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 five. Here we have a look at this 17th hole, elevated tee. It's a new tee back 56 yards, and the player's blind tee shot down to a fairway, that bunker there at 335, then it turns slightly left and uphill, second shot. Players haven't had trouble reaching it over the last few days. Winds off the right, maybe helping a touch. Well, they've arrived back at the tee, and this is, we've said so often, is a totally blind tee shot for the players. Great deal of yardage added to it with that new back tee, and it must at this stage be an advantage to Stuart Sink having the honour. Where's the wind coming from, Mo? Well, I'm sheltered up in the dunes at the okay. moment, but it's got to be pretty much downwind. Maybe slightly yeah. off their left hand, slightly off their right hand side. <coughs> it's just quartered around quite a bit over the last couple of hours, Ken. So the green's still in range, you think? Definitely in range. And this doesn't look like a driver to me. No, it's a three wood. No need for the sign, you just leave it down the shadows yeah. right there. You just Thank you. The marshals, they do a great job throughout these championships, but he was just about to raise the quiet please sign, but the shadows this time of evening are so long. Would have gone across the tee in front of Stuart. He likes it. Tom Watson's driven particularly well with this type of wind this week. Off the right and helping. Ah! Maybe the leg's getting a little tired. Looks stuck on the back foot without one a fraction. Bit weary, yes. But, uh, he had his chance, great chance, on the 72nd hole. And at this moment, it doesn't look as if we're going to see a miracle. Very rare to see a display of emotion out of Tom, too. He keeps his cards close to his chest. Well, there have been a few people who I'd have thought they should have won this championship this week, but Tom certainly would have thought, had it. You said, Ken, did he? Is it just going through a little period now when 
Uh, there was a period on the course when he thought, this, I can't do this. This is not going to happen. But us sitting here, we thought it would and it could. And it still could. That's the amazing thing. Yes, he could punch out. Anything could happen, but he, he's not favoured at this moment. The difficulty now is, depends on the lie, Peter, is that if he's got to lay it up, it, the fairway narrows down to 13 yards up there. It's pinched in at 13 yards uh, where he needs to try and lay it up, so he has to leave it back at about 120 to the front of the green. So, flag on 30. Oh, and they still haven't found it. I can't believe that. It's not looking good right now, but there's quite a few of us trying to find his ball. It's amazing that no one actually saw it. It's pretty, pretty spread out there, Phil. Does nobody have any idea where it, where it, well, where it landed? You know, there was, uh, there's so many people, hundreds and hundreds of people over on the right-hand side. Amazing that no one saw it. We're just watching it, and it buried. It cloaks straight in. Ooh, oh, there we go. No, they found something. That. If that's his, he can't advance that very far. When we did that yesterday with Steve Marino and used the replay to find, give an idea of where the ball landed, I had a guy suggest to me this morning that that was illegal. It, 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 it was an outside agency, us having a replay. I'm sure Ian Patterson would have had something to say about that if it was. A helping hand from the television. There it is there. Okay, guys, I'm going to hit it right out here. Gentlemen? Coming out that way. Leah. please. He'll be doing well to get this back in the fairway. We've seen quite a few players this week. I don't know if I can get it out of there, Ox, but I better give it a try. It's Caddy Neil Oxman, good friend of his for a long time. Caddy's occasionally for him. One of America's top uh, consultants in the world of politics. Remarkable man, I'm told. Punishing, punishing rough. I think the old legs, as you said, Ken, have gone a bit weary. I found it anyway. Yes, he had his hip done, his right hip done in October. I know he's got a couple of, I'm making him sound like an oldie now, a couple of dodgy feet as well. He's got special shoes. Sometimes have troubles with the bottoms of his feet. It's big Tom. Lost it again. Go ahead, lay up. Got a lay up. Try and lay up again. Well, this is, uh, I think, more than disappointing. I was so sure that he was, after he birded that 17th, I was so sure he was going to win this. And he almost just played the 18th too well. He hit that eight and just pured it. Sad to see this. Well, that's three. And Sink is in a good position to knock it on the green. And two. red spot you saw the ball just run past it's 120 to the front 150 to the flag so Tom will have somewhere around the 140 mark for his fourth Mo have you got a yardage on Sink's shot yes he's got 255 yards to go he's just in the left semi as you can see and Stuart Sink must not allow his mind to race ahead at this point he really just has to Bear down, concentrate on that old adage of one shot at a time. 
He's got a four iron out here. And if he keeps his head over the next 15 minutes, the greatest prize can be his. Just see the top of the flag. 225 to the front. He's got a his bunkers left and right. He's got to avoid those. Wind off the right. his but uh, he's certainly in a very commanding situation now Watson's got to get down in two for a par he two putts to would take him to a two shot lead one hole left to play if Watson takes three from where he is it's nearly his here at Turnbury this week was set up and presented probably as good as I've ever seen any links course for the Open Championship conditions were just fantastic got to commend everyone involved it stood up to the the best players in the world full shot now from Tom Watson currently one shot behind I suppose if this has got to go in or very close to have any chance. Well, just almost a <laughs> feel quite deflated, most everyone at the moment, but you never know, Tom's still got a chance to hold that be for a five. You never know in this amazing game. If you're just joining us, this is a sudden death playoff. A playoff anyway over four holes between Stuart Singh and Tom Watson. Played two holes, Watson is well over. Stuart Singh is level par. And the 17th and the 18th. Two more holes. Singh, a five-time winner on the US Tour. Was the Travelers Championship in 2008. 36 year old from Duluth, Georgia. Has a one and two playoff record on the PGA Tour. This isn't the sort of end we wanted or we were expecting, Ken, is it? We were, we were all buzzing when, it were, when there were still three or four holes to go, and this, uh, sadly, has uh, become very dead at this moment. It won't be if he pops this, but that's very unlikely. Yeah, everyone seems to have gone very quiet thinking Tom was going to do it, but going to start something good for Stuart Sink, I think. But anyway, this still might go in for a par for Tom. What a chance. Oh, brilliant, brilliant drive. 
That's a six at best. Sink now with about 45 feet for Eagle. If this was to go in, Kendall, but seal it, wouldn't it? Even two putts would put him at least three shots ahead. Yes, I think you'd just be trying to roll this up Kushti to a couple of feet away. A tremendous achievement from Stuart Singh uh, with Watson's record in the open. I think they were hoping for the, the fairy tale story. Yeah, well, that would have been almost well, the impossible dream. But it so nearly came true. I'm glad it did. Is he allowing himself to think? champion about 15 to 20 minutes this is for a six few deep breaths and straight and firm across the lengthening shadows and she goes modest applause and they make the way to the 18th for what surely will be the final with him yeah, Stuart Singh four ahead Poor old Stewart, he's probably wondering why there's not more support behind him. He's been a good player for such a long time. And he's about to to win that like elusive Ryan, major championship. Prevent the win. I say we keep going. Casey Kane, no. <laughs> Elliot Sadler. Yeah, they're talking about NASCAR. Elliot Sadler, NASCAR driver. It's Caddy Frank Williams. Sun. This week he's had a week in the sun. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he'll be philosophical about it, but it'll hurt. He have many memories of the last couple of three holes, four at the 17th, the good tee shot at the last, good-looking second shot that just went through the back of the green. Couldn't get down in two, resulted in this playoff. And I think he just ran out of steam. This fella hasn't let it 
can get to him. Though. He's just grinding away. He knows he's got to stay on his feet. A couple of good swings, and he will be the champion. Well, at this stage, something like a four iron, seven iron would do it. Play well short of the bunker, keep the trouble out of play. Do is hit it in one of the bunkers, and that's safely down the fairway. 5 4 4 3 for sink on the 18th hole this week. Tom Watson, 4 3 4 5. It was a slightly over bowled shot, he didn't need to take that bunker on, he would have hated it to trickle up against the face of that. Well, if he's not pumped up now, he'll never be. <laughs> now, Tom Watson. At the age of 59, at least he's come back and reminded us that he is probably the greatest player of Lynx golf that's ever been. Sadly finishing in poor style, but he'll be uh, Sonny Dill for the Senior British Open starting on Thursday. And I'm sure that he'll have recovered by then. It's just been a long week for him and this playoffs. He must have taken five at the last over the four to win, not the stuffing out of him, I think. It certainly will. He, it was all there. It was his. And the old graver getting going there. Stuart Sink. Just S Sink. What do you think he puts all the names on? All the all the letters. Very neatly done in time for the presentation. It's all right, Graver. Just you put Mr. Sink on there. It's been just a wonderful week, a lot of expectation. We saw Greg Norman last year lead into the last nine holes and honored to be overtaken by Podrick Harrington. This year, Tom Watson had us all high with expectations. We're going to witness something special. But Stuart Sink is going to snatch the prize. He's played good golf. I mean, there's no doubt he Sink has played very well. 69 today. And several players had chances, but they just couldn't get the deal done. That's the, one of the hardest things about golf or about sports. Stuart Sink was never in the lead of the championship until Tom Watson bogeyed the last hand. So Tom's had to live with the pressure the entire week of expectation. I apologize. Sorry, out of the option to bring it out this time. There's one of relief, please. There's one of relief. Oh, one. Then plus one? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll take it then. Thank you. There's one point of relief. Just swing, 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 drop it. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank Fences for no okay. penalty. Well, I was getting really excited earlier today. I thought um, Tom Watson was going to create history. I think, like you said, when he bogeyed that last hole, I just didn't have anything left. <laughs> Still smiling. Good shot. The way I'm hitting it, I might hit you. <laughs> <laughs> very ironic if he played a beautiful shot about 10 feet from the hole and rolled it in for three. Then you think what might have been. He's a long way back. so brilliant that this is a bit embarrassing for Tom, he's, he's, he's gone, so uh, there's no other way to describe it, he, he had an opportunity. 
Richard in the very first hole with sink in the bunker, misjudged the second shot. And that uh, started the problems. He hasn't hit one really good shot since then, except the pitch in the second hole. And the putt. But, uh, wayward hitting. One final elegant, strong pitching wedge swing to finish for Stuart Sink. 170 yards out, straight downwind into the welcoming embrace of the grandstands. A pitching wedge, Maureen? Good Lord. Pitch it up in the air. Bounce is short, big hop. for both players. And Sink has played beautifully in this uh, in the playoff. Absolutely superbly. Tom Watson. Gracious winner and a gracious loser, that's for certain. Big time. Tom's wife, Hillary.
country. which included a birdie at the last to get him into the playoff. But what stories will be written about this man? So near, really. He had, he had the trophy really on the palm of his hand before he could close his fingers. All right, what's the, what's the program? But wonderful, okay. wonderful memories. Unbelievable, really, that... Uh, when you think a four to win from a perfect position and a lovely looking second shot at five low, just to go through the back of the green and leave him in, a, in an awkward spot with that, uh, it's so sad and it's so, so amazing. So gracious, too. Gary making their way home. Learn thoughts. A joyous Stuart Sink. And Ken, although a sort of unsung hero, a worthy chair, he's played well. They all came and they all played. And he had the lowest score at the end of the day. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Looking at his statistics, he putted particularly well this week, as he generally does, driven the ball pretty accurately. Very steady, hasn't dropped too many strokes. And 17 birdies for the week is a, a good number, and of course, this tricky. And I have to also say, what a great challenge the course has been with those little changes of the winds. Day one, no breeze at all. The next two days. The wind just picking up in the final day, quite blustery, but always in a little di different direction to really test the players out. Here's the gold medal. Just the finishing touches. All done in time for the presentation. I suppose Tom's consolation is he already got five of those. <laughs> yeah. He'd have loved one more, though, wouldn't he? Yeah. He'd have loved just one more. But wasn't to be. I suppose wouldn't we all have just liked one more? Mm. Uh, unbelievable performance from both players in an exciting week's golf and got a deserved champion in Stuart Sink. There's that all ended up. It's Chris Wood, you see, coming. Uh, he, he, was, uh, he was right there. He dropped a shot at the last. Westwood dropped a couple of shots in the last two or three holes. It was just there. Luke Donald, a wonderful round. Deef Goose, and what will his memories of this be? A lovely looking tee shot at the 15th, went through in the bunker, took five. Matthew Goggin, 73, still pretty good playing, and a lot of very good scores lower down, which pulled these players well up the field. But uh, Matteo Manasera, the young. 16-year-old amateur from Italy, 69, two over par. That's 282 for four. It's a wonderful score and gets the silver medal. He was the only amateur to qualify for the final 36. Sad day for Ross Fisher, but a happy day when his wife produces a, a baby. And all will be well there, I, I trust. John Daly, it's at four over, pretty good. Right down to our last champion, Paul Laurie there, 68 today. Darren Clark looked, looked pretty good one time. Darren had a bit of a blow up on one hole in the back nine, which cost him three or four shots. <laughs> oh, man. But all in all, a good week. An enjoyable week, beautifully run, with a worthy champion. That's it. Oh, you got... <laughs> 
Are you staying over? Yeah, we're going to make a start. Do you make a start? Yeah, but you're going to have to So many people absolutely kicking themselves later on. Tom Watson, of course, one of them. The Westwood, I'm sure, will feel that he had the greatest chance to win the greatest title. Chris Wood, the moment he missed that putt on the 18th to take a bogey, he looked absolutely disconsolate. I'm sure he felt then that two under would have a great chance of playing off, and so it proved. that win the United States become the most successful nation in open history that's the 42nd title which gives them one more than Scotland of course Scotland haven't won many in recent times but in the early stages they won an awful lot 42 for the United States 41 for Scotland 28 for England 9 for Australia 8 for South Africa 3 for Spain 2 for Ireland and then a bunch of big one ones and the United States now have 27 champions who won those 42 titles Good Sink, 27th. So I think we can hear from the new champion, Stuart Sink. He shot a 69 on the final day to get into a playoff and beat Tom Watson to win the title. Let's hear from him. Stuart, another jewel in the sun, and this time you've come off the better. Yeah. Can you tell us what it's like to become Open champion in such extraordinary circumstances today? Yeah, extraordinary just uh, tips the iceberg here. It's, um, it's been a surreal experience for me. Not only playing one of my favorite courses in a, you know, a, a, a wonderful tournament, but playing against Tom Watson. I mean, this just doesn't happen, this stuff. I, I grew up watching Tom Watson play on TV and hoping, hoping one day maybe I could follow in his footsteps, not play against him at the Open Championship. And he's turned back the clock, and it's just been amazing. It really, there's been so many different things, and uh, I just feel so happy just to be a part of it, let alone win. It was all coming down to the wire in regulation play. But I wonder when you look back on that birdie that you made at the 18th, how crucial a putt will that be when you look back on your career? It, it'll be uh, the most crucial putt that I've ever struck in my life, I think. Um, I would like to think that maybe some more crucial ones would come later. But up to this point, nothing even comes close. And uh, to, to have hold one out there, it's just such a sweet feeling um, to do that at that moment. But, uh, it's almost indescribable. 14 years, 54 majors before this. What's given you the edge this week, do you think, Stuart? It's, it's impossible to say, really. Um, I just have felt very calm all week about the golf course. I, um, I, I was over last week playing some links in Ireland with my family, and that was great relaxation and preparation. Um, the Turnberry Hotel's been very convenient. It's been very easy. Um, and I, I found something within my swing the day before the tournament started, and you know, I haven't had the best year. so. Um, I found something with my swing that just helped me hit the ball really solid all week. I hit the right shot a lot, and my putting was just, uh, it was right on target all week. And just finally, Stuart, I'd like to know what it was like going into that playoff, because you must have known that perhaps the majority of the crowd out there wanted Tom Watson to make history today. In the event, you've done it. How difficult a task was that? It was, uh, but I played with uh, Lee Westwood yesterday. so. Him being a Brit, I, I kind of knew what to expect, that the, the crowd would be more on, on Tom's side because they were that way yesterday with, with, uh, with Lee. And it's not the first time in my career I've been the, uh, the under-the-radar guy and, and sort of the quiet one that, that no one is rooting for. That's okay. Uh, maybe this will change it. I'm sure it will. Go and collect your claret jug. Thank well you. deserved. Thanks, Thank Hayden. you, Stuart. <laughs> Very understanding Stuart Sink talking to Hazel Urban. He's a, a very nice fellow and he'll be a worthy champion, I have no doubt. Who knows how many more majors he will go on to win. I fear it really was the very last chance for Tom Watson, Chief Executive of the Royal NH Golf Club of St Andrews, Peter Dawson.
goes the champion has certainly seen some miles travels in a wooden box and many of the champions Harrington included have taken it with them <laughs> almost wherever they've gone for the year that they've, that they've owned it Of course, the original links here, which was built in the early 1900s, was completely destroyed, bulldozed over during the two world wars when it became an airfield on both occasions. The original championship prize, of course, was a belt. And the championship began at Prestwick in 1860 received a challenge belt made of rich Morocco leather embellished with a silver buckle and emblems the golf champion trophy eventually took over it was made by Mackay Cunningham Company of Edinburgh it was hallmarked in 1873 solid sterling silver the first open champion to receive the new trophy was the 87, 1873 winner Tom Kidd Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Brown, Chairman of the RNA Championship Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the prize giving ceremony for the 138th Open Championship, and thank you for joining us to welcome our new champion. Before we do, I must thank Turnberry for allowing us to hold the championship here on this great course in one of the most beautiful settings in the world of golf. The cooperation of everyone here at Turnberry on and off the course has been outstanding and unstinting. In particular, I want to recognize the contribution of the Championship Committee and members of Turnberry Golf Club, whose help has been given at all times with great enthusiasm. The players have commented all week on the fantastic condition of the course. For course and estate manager George Brown, this has been his third Turnberry Open in charge, and our thanks, along with best wishes for his retirement, go to him and his crew for an outstanding job and for producing the course in such wonderful shape. Of course, we could not stage this championship without our thousands of volunteers who undertake a huge range of jobs, many of you returning year after year to do so. My thanks to you all. But most of all, our thanks go to you, the fans, for supporting the players so generously and knowledgeably all week in such good numbers. Thank you. Now I will ask Peter Dawson to announce the prize winners and the captain of Turnberry Golf Club, Peter Wiseman, to present them. The leading amateur and winner of the silver medal from Verona in Italy, Matteo Manassero.
And, and the runner-up and winner of the Silver Salver is Tom Watson. Ladies and gentlemen, with a score of 278, the winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Stuart Sink. Thank you so much. <laughs> I stand here a little, uh, a little intimidated by this piece of hardware I have in my hand. Um, a lot of emotions running through my, my mind right now and my heart, and uh, I'm just proud as I can be to be here with this. Uh, congratulations to Tom. Um, my hat's off again. Just, uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. Turned back the clock, um, just did a great job, and it was fun watching you all week, Tom, it really was. All of us, I'm sure I speak for all the rest of the field when I say that too. I, um, I'd like to thank all of the fans that came out this week. I know um, this may not be the easiest place to get to, <laughs> but uh, you did a great job. Uh, you supported me all the way, and I really appreciate it. I love playing Lynx golf over here. I love Turnberry. I love playing golf in Scotland, and um, I really appreciate all the support. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> this is, um, I've waited quite a while for this. I think this is my 12th Open I've played in, and um, I haven't had the best record here, but all that's gone now. And uh, for that, um, I, I have to thank uh, several people I'd like to thank my coach, Butch Harmon. I'd like to thank my trainer, Chris Noss, my uh, mental coach, Mo Pickens, and Preston Waddington. Thank my caddy, Frank, over there, Frank. Good work. My, um, my parents, my parents, Rob and Ann, back in the States, who got me uh, started at such a young age. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my wife and my kids, who are standing off to the side over here, too. Guys, thank you for being there with me the whole way. And uh, Lisa, thank you for uh, introducing me to my faith, and I'd like to lift this up to God for giving me the ability to, uh, to withstand all the pressure and all the, all the uh, obstacles that present itself out there on the links. And uh, also like to thank the committee for hosting the tournament here. Thank Turnberry. It's been a wonderful experience. And um, as always, I enjoy coming back over, and I, um, I look forward to so many more now that I've got this clear jug. Thank you. remarkable one it's been um, what a remarkable championship it's been this has been an amazing week and so uh, to have someone of Tom Watson's quality get so near and yet wasn't able to walk away with the prize perhaps that's right and proper but uh, we'll have memories of Tom Watson that linger with us even more years we had plenty in the past there are more yet to come next year we're going to St Andrews for the championship 
at the 150th anniversary of the playing of the championship at St Andrews, the home of golf. Stuart Sink will be there. Tom Watson, I don't know whether Tom will be there. It's, uh, I'm told he may be and he may well announce his retirement that year. But to wherever, we will be there and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this championship. We've been blessed with pretty good weather and a wonderful uh, array of talent from the young, the 16, 17, 18 year olds that have thrilled us, the young man, and a Sarah from Italy, and the ones not so young. Amazing, isn't it? The game of golf with 16 year olds and a, virtually a 60 year old competing in the same arena. But Stuart Sink it is who has won this great trophy, and he must, I must confess, he took it very calmly and beautifully, and well, he's obviously enjoyed it. He's an experienced man and he's going to love every moment and he's going to enjoy being the champion golfer of the year. Off they go, you wonder how the celebration will be tonight. It's been a long day coming up to 8 o'clock and they started at about 8 o'clock this morning. So for everyone it's been a long but very worthwhile day and a very long and worthwhile week. There's so many people here, so many people contributing to this great championship and he's going to wander off around the crowd sign a few autographs lots of interviews lots of phone calls to make what memories but also the memories of those that didn't manage to get their hands on the trophy particularly Tom Watson and those that came so near but it's been a great event it's been a privilege to be here and to see a new champion and just the demise of the old one, the old champion, who played with so much grace and elegance to the new champion, who hopefully will carry on the traditions of this funny old crusty game of golf. Isn't it amazing how these championships go? So many possibilities at the start of the week. The huge favourite, Tiger Woods, didn't make the cut for only the third time in a major championship, only the second time as a professional. The first shock of the week, and I suppose in a way that opened the door for just anybody to come through and win it. In the end, it was Stuart Sink claiming that ancient and historic trophy. Kid was the first winner of the trophy in 1873, but Tom Morris Jr.'s name was the first to be engraved on it. It's the 1872. Do a couple there, and then we'll bring you forward. Just doing a couple here, and then we'll move forward. He's now got a lot of duties to perform. He's going to be here some time before he can disappear. And Enjoy something perhaps out of the claret jug. He required to pose for lots and lots of photographs, and then of course he has to go and do the formal media interview at the media centre. He'll be doing part of the lots of one on one radio and television interviews. It's the start of a really hectic and busy, uh, busy year for Stuart Sink. Wherever he goes, he will be touted as the Open champion. Well, actually, America, of course, he'd be touted as the British Open champion. Differentiated from the US Open. a little bit in some ways the playoff anyway certainly of the playoff at Canusti when Paul Laurie came through with some spectacular play in the playoff and certainly in that shot that Sink hit into the 18th did with a much shorter club as witnessed with the superb shot that Laurie hit into the 18th to make sure of victory and of course Justin Leonard was present on both occasions he was playing in that playoff he was watching this time Same sort of story in a way at Carnoustie back in 1999, Van der who seemed to have it within his grasp, grasp making a mess of the 72nd hole, taking a seven. 
six would have won it on this occasion. Tom Watson taking a five when a four would have done it to have created the most extraordinary history to have become the biggest winner of the Open alongside Harry Barton, a six-time winner. You've been listening to Peter Allison, Ken Brown, Mark James, Wayne Grady, Andrew Cotter and Sam Torrance throughout the week. Philip Park in Maureen Medill and Paul Eels were out on the course. I do hope that you've enjoyed the BBC coverage of the 138th Open Champion. We'll leave you with a vision of the champion for the next year, Stuart Singh. From me, Julian Tutt, we'll say goodbye from the Ayrshire coast and the wonderful Elsa Lynx at Turnbury. Bye-bye.